Hello, Minecrafters. We're going to do uh, the first step of uh, making our iron farm, uh, which is to find out where spawn is. The best place to build these is at world spawn, if you have that option. I'm playing in a single player world, so I do. Um, or on a small server or a private server, you also have this option. So the first thing I want to do is I want to wait until nightfall comes. And I want to sleep in a bed. And okay, we're doing this because we are going to intentionally die. Um, this is the best way to find spawn. Now, this is important. After sleeping in that bed, I am going to destroy that bed. Okay, let's go and put it back into, uh, into a chest. No reason to lose the bed. I'll put it here in my uh, base in a box. There are some other steps involved which I've already done, but I will list them here. Uh, as you can see, um, my experience level, uh, my enchanting level is 1. It's very low. You want to get that down to 5 or less. Ideally 1 or 0. Uh, ideally 0. Um, by enchanting some books or doing whatever you can to, to burn those out and use them. Because uh, you're willing to die, so you, you, know, you don't want to lose. You don't want to die with 18 or 20 levels, right? Uh, or worse yet, 30 levels. Uh, so uh, the other thing you want to do, obviously, is clear out your inventory. One thing that when I first did this years ago that I often would forget to do would be to clear out my armor. So you want to make sure that your armor is taken off and stored. Now I just make a uh, temporary, I just have a temporary chest for doing this that sits beside my main bed here at my base. And that has all my stuff in it. You want nothing in your inventory. You're not going to need it. Okay, so inventory's clear. Uh, enchanting levels are clear and uh, except for one obviously we've made a bed we've slept in it we've destroyed the bed now we're ready to go and die use our minecart elevator how's the best way to die I think the best and easiest way to die if you have water nearby is just to drown yourself that sounds very morbid so we're just going to hop in here and we're just going to put ourselves out of our temporary misery. Here we go. Once those bubbles are gone, obviously the health begins to deplete. And when we respawn, we'll respawn at the world spawn since there's no place uh, for the game to put us. Normally it would put you at the last place you slept. Now this is pretty cool. As you can see, world spawn, and it's very important to be precise with this. I want to stay right here in this spot. As you can see, world spawn is still within the confines of our base. That was intentional. Uh, I had forgotten the precise place where, where world spawn was. Perhaps when I first logged into this world, I could have taken uh, note of this. Let's see. So I've hit F3. Um, if you look to the left and go down uh, to the beginning of the second, for lack of a better word, uh, paragraph or section, you see there where it says X, Y, Z, and below that it says block. Block is the best guide here. You can see it's X is negative 70. So I'm going to write that down, negative 70. I prefer just to use a physical piece of paper. Although I do have this backed up on an electronic file once I get it. Uh, our height, our Y coordinate is 64, obviously, duh, right? And our final Z coordinate is 209. Pretty simple. Spawn will always be somewhere near uh, 0, 64, 0. Uh, but, you know, or 0, 63, 0, something like that. 
somewhere within a couple hundred blocks of those coordinates. Anyway, here we are. Uh, having the exact number is important. Now, just to confirm where our world spawn is, just to make absolutely sure that we got this right, I'm going to go and kill myself one more time. Obviously, we slept in the bed and that made it daytime. I wanted it to be day when I die so I don't die by monster. Yeah, I don't want a creeper blowing up my stuff when I die. Hey, look, I can get XP from where I died before. Hey, I got a level. <laughs> that I'm going to lose again. Hey, perhaps there's another piece of advice there. If you do die with a bunch of levels, oops, right? <laughs> In this case, we only had one. You can always run back and get some of your XP back. All right, now we're going to respawn again. And let's see where we, get, where, where we get placed now. As you can see, we're not quite at the same coordinates, but we're very close. So I'm going to write this down. Negative 73. 64, 212. Now this is because world spawn is not an exact dead singular spot. It is a range. It's a chunk area. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to get several samples and then I'll take the average of those and that'll put me right at the middle of that, right? I could mark them too, couldn't I? Of course, I have the coordinates written down, so I can mark them any time. I'll have to do a stand on them and put a block there. And then I can look and just pick something in the middle of those. Or I could figure it out mathematically. If you know me, you know I'm more of an English kind of guy than a math kind of guy. Although I can do some math. <laughs> There's our XP level again. Hey, in the end, I guess if, if we keep getting that, we'll lose nothing, right? Here we go one more time. I might do two more, get four samples. All right. And I'll explain why we're trying so hard to get this right. Interesting graphics there. Oh. Okay. Check that out. <laughs> they decided we like the water, apparently. So, let's figure out our chunk. Obviously, the uh, 63 will move up, but um, height isn't as important as the X and the Z here. So, let's see what we have. We have negative 82. I'm just going to write 64 again, and 213. Okay. Now, let's swim back up. I could just drown here. Actually, well, that speeds us up a good bit. One more time. That'll give us four samples. Which is pretty good. Now they're no longer giving us our XP. And here we are at a similar location. Let's write it down. Negative 80. Since it's so convenient, let's do one more. Let's get five samples. But I'm getting a clear picture here of where we are and where spawn's going to be, where the center of spawn is. Usually spawn is going to be, I think, if memory serves, an even numbered space. I'm on the fence about things right now. <laughs> we have negative 77. I'll keep the height at 64 because that's the height we're using. And 210. Okay, cool. I think we're near the middle of it right about here, uh, actually. But we have five sample coordinates coordinate sets, positions. 
So now what we're going to do is go back to the base, get our stuff. We don't really have to get all of our stuff. It doesn't matter right now. We're safe. We're at base. If we die, we don't care because we don't have anything on us. Anytime you're doing something very risky, especially on a build. For example, if you're building in the nether out over lava, you want to get rid of your stuff in your inventory and get your levels down really low so that if you die, you lose nothing. Then you just die and go back and just keep building. The only thing you'd have is your, whatever your simple building material is and not much of it. And that way you minimize what you lose. No need to take a risk. As you can see, my mining <laughs> stuff is worn down. I like to get mine all the way down to zilch before I repair it. This one would be ready for a repair, but it is actually at the uh, too expensive to repair mark. So I'm just burning it out before I switch up to its uh, replacement. I like to be efficient and take full advantage of the duration of my uh, of my items and tools. Okay, so here we are. Oh, the stone block will work fine, I suppose. Hmm, let me see if I have something a little better. Maybe something that stands out a little more. Sand stands out. Sandstone. I don't want something affected by gravity. Let's do sandstone. Actually, if we're underwater, sandstone won't stand out, will it? Let's see. Ah, I have the perfect block. How about prismarine? Okay. Go ahead and re make sure everything's re-equipped. We're not going to be dying anymore, at least not intentionally. And it's highly doubtful we're going to die unintentionally. Hey, look, it's nighttime again. That's actually a good thing for us because now I can go back to my regular bed and sleep and I can reset my position. Although, as you can see, the advantage of, uh, of having your base at or near spawn is when you die. You, even if you can't get back to your bed or your bed's been destroyed, you can always, you will always respawn at your base. Right. So it's always good to have it, even if your other base, you build a cooler, better base somewhere else later. It's always good to have um, a base and maybe your first starter base at spawn. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's run around. This structure that you see here is actually going to go away. I had used it to build an old wheat farm, and it served its purpose. But for reasons we'll get into later, I'm actually going to need to move the wheat farm anyway. Anyway, one thing at a time. Uh, let's mark these coordinates. So our first set was 70, 64, 209. right there okay let's mark that spot okay for now let's bust out some of these that'll help it stand out even more okay our next uh, set of numbers or coordinates is 73 64 to 12 okay so 73 excuse me it's actually negative 73 and 212. Right there. Actually, there we go. Right there. Negative 73, 212. Okay. Marked. Okay. Now, our next set is 82, 64, 213. Of course, it's negative 82. So that's going to be out here in the water. No problem. Okay. Right here. And 213. 82. 
right there. Okay. So, I'm just going to build straight up. Hello, squid. He's about to have a lot of aquatic friends. I'm actually, at the time I'm making this video, the aquatic update is going to come out anytime soon, anytime now. Uh, there's already been some snapshots released of it. But uh, but I'm waiting on the uh, the actual uh, you know, release. Okay, so that gives us an idea of our relative position. Again, it's starting to look more and more like center is about right here but let's keep up with it our next one is negative 80 64 210 okay negative 80 64 which it doesn't matter for our purposes now 210 right here okay I'm gonna cheat on this one a little bit Right there. Okay, good. Destroy what's in between here. I'll fix the water later. No problem, if necessary. Ah, they got rid of that uh, feature. They improved it. That's good. Ah, uh, negative 80, 64 to 10. Okay. Um, although we're at 63 right now. Finally, negative 77, 64, 210, if I recall, that put us on the fence. Let's see. Negative 77, excuse me, I'm reading the wrong one. Okay, so we were right there. Uh, and then 210, right there. I'm going to cheat on this one. There we go. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I don't care so much about the vertical placement of these as I do about the uh, the horizontal you know, alignment. So if you take all of these and you kind of get an average, hmm, it's really looking to me like right about is about center right about here. In fact, if I had to guess, I would say right there. Okay. Now, let's really torch around that so we know that's marked as our spot. And let's get rid of the others. We are close. Of course, this is going to be a range of area anyway, so we're be we're almost being excessively precise. But that's okay. Minecraft is all about precision. The more precise you are, the better. You can't be too precise. At least I don't think so. You can decide that for yourself. Of course, it's a case-by-case -case thing. With this, I want to get it right. Now let's fix our fence here, leave things the way they were. Let's go ahead and retorch our area. As you can see, I overly torch this. There are reasons for that that I need not go into now. For now, that's good enough. Okay. That looks nice and uh, paranoid. <laughs> Eventually, there's going to be some things built here. In fact, um, since we're going to be centering on this, there's going to be a structure built here. We'll get into that in a moment. This is going to be the center of our iron golem farm right here. This is where um, the golems are actually going to spawn, or is going to be centered on our world spawn. Now, the reason for that, and I'll repeat this in the other uh, upcoming videos in the series, the reason for that is that whatever, how do I put this, your world spawn, 
is a tiny area. It's one chunk, usually. That chunk is always active. In Minecraft, if you run away from, far, far enough away from a given set of chunks, that area goes dormant. You, if you've been playing for any amount of time, you know this. If you've ever put something in a furnace to cook, and then you run far away, and let's say you build a base over there and you work for you know 20 hours, and then you come back, that furnace is, co is still cooking right where you left it. And that's because that that plate, that other chunk, when you left it, it went dormant. This protects your computer, I suppose, from having to, to run all these chunks at one time. However, there's one chunk that no matter where you go in the world, you can go 20,000 blocks away, that chunk will never stop processing data and, and being active, and that is spawn. Now, I suppose one reason for that is that if you die, spawn is always there and ready for you to return to it. So there are a few other things you can do in the game to take advantage of spawn. I'm using it for an iron golem farm, but I'm probably actually going to also build my... Um, I'm going to build a farm here as well uh, for wheat. Uh, and in addition to that, I am going to, to do a, uh, a furnace setup here so that uh, when I put something in to cook, it'll keep cooking no matter where I'm at in the world. So I'm going to take full advantage of knowing where spawn is. But the most important thing for our purposes in this, t in this set of tutorials is that I will continually, no matter what I'm doing in the world, where I'm at, this baby will always be churning out iron ingots for me. So I can just leave it and just passively create iron all the time. And that's why the first, even though we're not building anything and we're not getting into quote, quote unquote, the good stuff yet, uh, the most important thing is preparation and making sure you have the right spot. And the best spot is spawn. Now I'm going to tell you another trick, uh, which I've actually taken advantage of in one of my multiplayer servers. If you build one iron golem farm at spawn, um, and then you build another one elsewhere, you can actually AFK at the one that's elsewhere, and now you have two iron golem uh, farms or iron farms working at the same time. Your one at uh, spawn is always working, and the one you're AFKing at is working because you're in that immediate area. So you can actually take advantage of this in yet another way. Anyway, that is the first step. That's the first part. And uh, in, our, in our upcoming video, we're actually going to start building the, uh, the actual uh, iron golem farm. Now remember, all right, so it's time to actually start building the, uh, the body of the, uh, of the iron grinder. So the first thing that I want to do just before we get started on building is give some credit. I actually based this grinder on a, on another build uh, by another uh, YouTuber uh, named uh, Avomance. I believe he just goes simply by the name of Avo, although his, his uh, name on YouTube is uh, Avomance, A-V-O-M-A-N-C-E. And uh, he's a really good builder. I like his videos a lot. Uh, and I've actually um, done this build a few times since I first discovered it uh, in other servers. And it works really well. Um, you might wonder then maybe why I'm reinventing the wheel and doing another video. Uh, I'm actually modifying this build in a number of ways. Uh, when Avomance made, made his build, he made it simply to be an iron grinder, which is great. It works perfectly for that. And to me, it's the perfect iron grinder. I've seen some iron grinders that have huge outputs of iron, and it's just too much. Um, I prefer to have one that's just running constantly and, uh, and is giving me enough iron for what I need. Uh, I don't want something that's putting out tens of thousands of ingots per, you know, hour. I don't, I don't want anything like that. I want the game to still have some challenge to it. Um, and this one is a good balanced uh, grinder. And another thing that I really appreciate about Avomance's work 
is he makes his stuff look good too. Uh, and that's something that I hold to as well in my building aesthetic. I, I don't want to make something that's clunky and mechanical and strange looking. I want something that that is aesthetically pleasing, that matches the maybe the, the, the style of the other builds in the area. Or doesn't match, but it should have some sort of architectural beauty to it, I think. Um, and so, uh, and so I really like the way that Abomans did that with his as well. Uh, so I just wanted to give some credit, uh, as you can see, uh, here's a link to Abomans's, uh, build for this, uh, his, uh, his page, his tutorial for this actual build. And, uh, and then here's a link to his, uh, to his overall page as well. So feel free to check those out. Uh, you could, for much of this process, you could follow along on his build. Um, but as we go, I'm going to make a few modifications in preparation for some of the changes I'm going to make. Uh, there are some differences. One difference, of course, is that we're building at spawn. Um, another uh, major difference is that we're going to incorporate a, uh, a villager breeding system into this larger build as well. Uh, and of course the third thing we're going to do is we're going to build a wheat farm centered uh, below this uh, this build too. And we'll get to why we're going to do that and how that works later. Um, so we're but we're but we're taking uh, the idea that uh, that Ava made and we're starting with that. Other people have made very similar grinders to this of course this the grinder itself is, is nothing special. I'm going to put my spin on it as well. Uh, Avo also asked that uh, that he be contacted if anyone uh, you know has any ideas or if they modify his build. Now I'm the same way. I like to see what people do with with uh, with with my tutorials and my ideas. So that's the fun of Minecraft I think. So I'm going to make sure that uh, that Avo gets to see this video as well. Anyway here we go. So the first thing to do um, is to uh, to build out we want to have an 18 by 18 base built I've already gone ahead and done that because I wanted to determine before we started this video where I want this baby to go if you recall uh, the first thing that we did was we located a center and we put prismarine there right we died about five or six times and we found our our, um, our coordinates of spawn right and we approximated the center by taking sort of the av those average positions and finding roughly the center of those. And here we are. For our purposes, this entire center of this build is on spawn, which is important to this build uh, for reasons already stated. So this baby will always be generating iron, even when we've, even when we've left this chunk. Uh, the next thing to do is out from that center we want to build our 18 by 18 base. That's pretty simple. Um, if you look at this the center four, right, so this is an even numbered uh, build which means if it's even based it's going to have a center of four. Um, we, we should have here a gap of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay all the way around, right? For a total, if you include the middle, of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if you count this way, you get the same thing. You add nine plus nine, you've got 18, right? And this whole thing is 18 by 18. So there are several ways in, to measure that and make sure you have that right. Double check this before we move on because having this size and this proportion is important so you want to make sure that you're following that template. Now, I'm going to deviate a little bit from Avo's build at this at this point although what I'm doing here won't matter to the function at all it's purely an aesthetic choice. I don't like my buildings to be flat down on, on the grass with ground level. I like them kind of like in real life to be raised up a block with the floor raised up. So what I'm going to do is go ahead I'm going to raise this wall a little bit, and for now I'm just going to torch it, since we're working at night. Last thing we want is a creeper spawning out here and blowing up our stuff. And as you can see, I over-torch things. There is a particular reason that, that in this village build I've done that. It's because I have a mob grinder 
uh, in that tower there. And I wanted everything very well lit, so I limit the spawns to that grinder. Uh, as I do structures here, like this one, I'm going to uh, to recollect those those torches and actually use them as the torches in the structure. So this way, I always have the torches I need at hand as I do new builds. So they end up getting recycled, so it's not a waste. But yes, I admit, I overlight things. I'm a paranoid lighter, and I think you should be too. Anyway, um, here we go. I just wanted to raise this up a step so that when I put in the, the base floor, as I'll call it, we, have, uh, we still have an outline of where the actual wall goes. I like to keep that clear. Okay, so let's go ahead and build a floor. So the next thing we want to do, we've got our center. We have our sides, right? We have, we have a floor put in, which is helpful since some of this is over the water. The next thing we want to do is we want to build a ring, so to speak. It's a square ring, of course, uh, above, uh, above our center here. It should be five blocks above. Uh, that is, it'll have a gap of four. So let's count it out. I want to. I'm just going to start by going to to one of these corners. And I'm just going to go one. Okay, there we go. Now, now our gap begins. Let's build the gap out of dirt. So gap of four. One, two, three, four. And now there's our fifth block, and that's actually the block that will begin the ring. So now let's go around. Okay, right there, we can look down and see our line. I'm crouching, of course, so I don't fall. Not that this fall would really hurt me. It might put a little damage on my feather falling boots, but I'd rather not fall and mess up and have to come back up here and do this again. So, uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and drop down a little bit here. Let's see. Might as well do things right. And I'll complete it from here. Okay. Again, doing this the slow way. So that's our next step. Pretty simple. As you can see, uh, essentially what we've done is we've created a hole here. Ultimately, this up here is going to become the center part of the floor uh, of our first uh, spawn chamber. And golems are going to fall through that hole, right? And we're going to continue to keep a, a hole here vertically in the two chambers. We'll get to those steps, of course. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to build out from that center. Um, I, most people I know do it this way, but I thought I would make a comment. I always use dirt for my scaffolding because dirt is easy to get rid of, especially with you know, an efficiency four uh, sh diamond shovel or any shovel, really. And so I like to use it, and it stands out from the rest of the build. Of course, if the build were made out of dirt, which, why would I build this out of dirt, um, then I might use something else for scaffolding. Uh, so you're going to see me using a lot of dirt, because again, we're not flying around in creative mode. Now, the, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to build out from the center two blocks in all four directions. Uh, and we want to build out uh, seven blocks, okay? So in addition to that ring there, we want to come out seven more blocks or seven more layers. So that'll be 14 blocks on each side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, as you can see, that comes right out to our edge, right? Now, we're just going to do that all four ways. checking and some of our bigger things as you've seen I'm going to speed up but for this I don't mind just showing you in real time what we're doing crouching and placing oh <laughs> a 
always in the last one. And there we go. All right. Uh, the next step is really easy. If you go out to the edge and then you come in one, so we're going to be outlining this inner edge here, you want to build around and connect these in a big square. But you leave that one lip sticking out in the middle. So I guess that's six blocks out, right? From the ring. And we know we're good because we're just following the inner edge of that wall. We're just going to go just like that. And we're going to leave that one sticking out up. What happened? Let's double check and make sure we went out far enough here. Might not have. Aha. <laughs> My eyes deceived me. So this is correct. I want you to see my mistakes. I want you to see everything I do here. Because chances are, you'll make the same mistakes. And being able to detect, to detect and double check your, for your mistakes early is very important. Especially when we're at this sort of fundamental, foundational part of the build, right? You don't want to mess up on this. The good thing is, everything aligns together. So each new step, you can double check the previous step. If I'm building this and there's not a lip there, I know I know that something is out of order. Something's out of alignment. I think I'm going to run out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get close and I'm going to run out. It's okay. What I'm going to do for now is put some dirt there so I can run back. Okay. Good. And where was our dirt block going down? Right here. Uh, but that's what it's going to look like. All right, with that, of course, being stone brick. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and cheat for now since I don't feel like running back to base just, just at the moment. I'm going to rob a little bit of brick off of this build just because I'm doing a video and I don't wanna waste your time. Or we could just have a really big door there and be okay with that too. <laughs> this was an old build that I had here. I actually truncated this build once I discovered that, oh, this is where spawn is, so, and I wanted to build this at spawn. It was only later that I decided to do this after I had already sort of established my base here. And if you've been watching all my Minecraft 101 and 102 videos, you know that already. All right, anyway, here it is. That's where we're at at this point in the build. Uh... So, uh, at this point, what we want to do is pretty simple. Um, the next thing we want to do is we just want to fill in all four of these. We'll call them quadrants, I guess. We want to fill in all four of these gaps, but we want to keep that center hole. All right. All right. So, there it is. Uh, as you can see, everything's filled in. And uh, right there is our center. So, it looks like a square. It is a square. With these little outcroppings uh, centered on the center, <laughs> with the center being that uh, hole there. All right, looks like the sun's going down. I like to work during the day, if only because we can see better then. I'm not worried about mobs spawning in here, but, you know, it's principle of the thing. So we're going to do that in a moment, just before we do. Make a quick point. Let's see. I think it's a good aesthetic, and this is another point from Avo that I that I incorporate into my build. Although at places we're going to have to come back and modify some of these, I'm not worried about those right now. But um, but later on, as we need to, we will be replacing some of these blocks. We're replacing now, but for now, let's just go ahead and put them. What he does is he doesn't overhang. See how this sticks out by one? We're going to go around and do a nice little overhang with inverted stone stairs. You could use the stairs of your choice, but it looks best to match it up. And I really like this, so I'm going to, to steal this one from Avo as well. Nice work, Avo. I really like his aesthetic and his builds. Function and beauty. Notice, by the way, my preferred approach. I like to 
place my other uh, block on the end, then come back and pop the corner block in between. I'm just crouching along our edge here, along our wall that we built earlier to do these. I'm doing this in survival, so I'm not just flying around and doing it quickly. Although for this, a nice slow placement is best. This won't take long. We're almost there. Making it look good. Okay, and this is our true edge right here. I guess you, one could be lazy and just put regular, regular block here, but I think it looks a lot better with an edge, especially when we get to the finished product. Okay. All right. There we go. Now. What we want to do is we want to locate and utilize these four corners. Uh, I'm continuing to follow Avo's build here. Everything I do that Avo does, I'm, I feel the need to, to point it out. I'm not a fan of plagiarism. I like to give credit. And I give him a ton of credit. I really, I can't stress how happy I am with this build. Okay. So here's our four corners, right? Obviously, that's a that's a corner uh, inverted stair as we just placed, right? What Avo likes to, I agree, is he likes to use for his corners. He likes to use a chiseled stone brick, and I agree with that approach. Um, I think what he did on his build below this was to use like uh, wood, like wood logs or something to set off that corner. I'm not a big fan of wood. Uh, so I really like this idea of just using chiseled stone brick all the way. So I'm going to modify his build here in one little way. I'm going to take a little fall damage when I do this, and I just don't care. So I don't want to waste your time. My boots will pay the price. <laughs> They're already about done. I'm actually trying to get them down to zilch so I can, uh, so I can uh, repair them in an anvil. Anyway, I'm going to make this whole corner here. I'm going to make that whole thing stone brick. Stone brick, excuse me. Chiseled stone brick. Uh, and if you're not familiar with these, I'm assuming you are, but just in case you're not, uh, you make them by putting two half slabs together. So if you, let me see if I have any half slabs on me. I do not. I would show you. But you take a half slab of stone brick there and one there. You pop them together and the output of that will be chiseled stone brick. I like the way these look. Uh, one quick note, uh, just, just so you know, I really like these in builds where I'm putting torches on the floor. Look at how that torch centers on that little, on the hole there, right? I really like that. And so that can be a sort of cool aesthetic to have. All right. Now we're going to get back to Avo's core build. What he does is from here on these corners, um, he will build up here with, uh, with stone brick. He'll go up six with chiseled stone brick. Let's do that. How are those boots looking? I'm keeping an eye on those boots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We'll save the boots a little bit, huh? Do a little damage to them, not as much. <laughs> All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Simple enough. Let's see if we can get it right this time. Oh, yeah, let's try a little trick, see if it works. Oh, yeah. You have to be quick to pull that one off. But <laughs> if you don't have any block lag. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Looking good now. Okay, and I'll come back and get that dirt later. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> it's all right. I'm continuing to work those boots down. Okay. Uh, and that's the next part right there. Those those are our corners of our build. Um, now what we want to do, uh, and we'll just treat this as part of the same step, 
uh, we want to build a wall between these three high. Okay. Uh, Avo suggests using regular stone, uh, smooth stone. Uh, I've used cobble on some of these builds, and that looks pretty good. There are a lot of different things you can do. I'm going to stick with his build. I really like the look of stone. I, again, I think I think he has it right. So I'm going to go across with regular old smooth stone. But you can use whatever you'd like. And I'm just going to work my way around. I think the best way to do it is place one layer. Because we're playing in survival. Right? Part of the challenge of survival, and there's a piece of cobble there. Part of the challenge of survival is doing it, is figuring out how to get to where you need to do your build, right? Whereas if you're doing this in creative, you don't have to worry about that. I like worrying about that. I enjoy that aspect of survival. If you've seen my creative mode videos, you, you see that I do a lot of work in creative mode. Uh, and I think that's a fun, a fun game too, but it's very different from survival. Survival adds some important steps that really fundamentally change the way the game's played. Uh, if you've watched my videos, you find that I tend to ramble during these moments. But for where I'm just place, repetitively placing blocks, sharing some of my some of my principles of Minecrafting, but. I enjoy, I enjoy the theory that underpins much of the whole thing. But for really big uh, fill-ins, I'll obviously fast forward to the next part. But we've about got this one licked, so. Alright, there we go. <laughs> Always the last one, right? It's going to be our theme, I hope not. Uh, all right, so we've got a wall, three high. As you can see, there are three chiseled stone blocks left. One reason I actually like the chiseled stone here for the corners, in addition to the aesthetic of it, it will look really good, is that you can clearly see the borders of those blocks. You can clearly see you have three left and you've used three. And I think that makes, uh, just purely from a utilitarian or pragmatic standpoint, that makes the build a lot easier. All right, and here's our original um, stairway, quote, end quote. <laughs> now, the next part is very important. This is what will determine, this is what will turn this into a village, quote, end quote. The placement of your doors is what determines where the quote end quote village is. Of course, this is a building. It doesn't look like a village. But as far as the game's internal programming goes, this is a village. Now, what you want to do is you want to place these doors on the outer edge. Okay, on the outer edge of this uh, of this three high wall that we just built. Now, notice. <laughs> This is a little bit tedious. If you're in, um, if you're building in uh, creative mode, this is super easy. It's a little more challenging if you're in survival. Let's see. What I want to do is I want to edge build here. Okay. So I can't. So I'm crouching. Right. I'm sneaking. And as I edge build, I'm going to move sideways. For me, that's my left arrow key. But you're. You may have your uh, controls set up differently. And I'm just going to place these here. If, if we mess up, we can just cut out the door and redo it. It's no problem. As you can see, this is 18 by 18 minus the ends is 16. Okay, so what that means is, and for this one I'm going to come out with some dirt and place it. No problem. No. Uh, what that means is 16 doors on each side. There are four sides, so that will be a total of 64 doors, all centered on those squares right there. So, this is the village. We should talk about village dynamics a little bit, right? The village is wherever your doors are, okay? That is, assuming the doors are aligned uh, in a way that the programming of the game um, interprets them as a house, quote, end quote. 
and this will because we're going to uh, one side of this of these doors is going to be covered the other side is not going to be covered and it's going to be exposed directly to skyline and that's what makes this a house and, and our houses all 64 of them are centered on that hole that is the center of the village and guess where golems spawn golems spawn around the center of the village so what that means to us then is that we're basically manipulating the programming of the game the, pro the programming of minecraft to make a grinder that will spawn iron golems centered on a, on that hole where they were drop will drop down into what will later become the kill zone. And this is this is the basis of most, if not all, iron grinders. Something like this, where you you manipulate and you utilize the village boundaries. Looking good. Just double checking everything. We've almost got this. Again, I know this is a task in survival, but you'll be doing this in survival. And I, I, and not you know, Avo mentions time and time again. I'm doing the yeah. I'm doing this in creative, but you know, when you do this in survival, it's different. <laughs> or at least he mentions that once. Maybe I'm just mentioning that in my head. Um, and we'll put a door, open it up, walk through it, reclose it after we reclaim that. There we go. Um, as such, I think the advantage of his tutorial, it goes fast. That's why you should watch his tutorial and enjoy it. <laughs> um, the advantage of this tutorial is I'm going to share tips for building this in survival, since you'll be, since you'll be building it in survival. Again, as Avo points out, what's the point? of building this in creative other than making a tutorial to show how it's put together right but i'm the process interests me as much as if not more than the product so there we go uh, as you can see uh, we have doors all around uh, we've essentially created a village well not quite yet there's one more step. I'm going to take stone brick. You can take whatever you would like. Um, or, you know what? Let's stick with stone. Let's keep that consistent. I can't honestly remember what Avo did here, but I'm happy to go with stone. I think he used stone. I'm trying to remain true to his build as much as I can. So I'm torching this out, by the way. All these torches are going to go away when we put water here. Um, however, we will want some torch light along these walls, wherever we can put it. Actually, you know what? The, thinking ahead, the best way to do it, let's see how that works out, is to put it right here. You want to make sure to torch this out. As you go, you want to place your torch light. You don't want creepers spawning here. I'm not. I'm not going for anything beautiful or special here. We're not going to be looking in here anyway. Now, there's going to be water here, so we're not going to have to worry about mobs spawning on the water. But I'm also lighting this up for these other squares up here, and just so I can see if I ever do need to get in here and do anything. In the meantime, before there's water here, I don't want things spawning in here. So, All right, there we go. Let's make a small adjustment here. That looks pretty well lit. Um, okay. Ah, and what next? I could, we could do this out of order. Let's do this out of order a little bit. Hmm. Nah, we'll stick with the order. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and build some stairs. Makeshift stairs. <laughs> okay. This third and final layer coming off our corner um, needs to be right above the rest of the wall, right? So it's just like a wall with, with a bunch of doors in it. That's all it is, right? And when we do this, this is what actually completes the village. This is what makes this read as a village. These are now, quote unquote, houses. Cheat that corner, there we go. Always feel nervous when doing that. <laughs> I've done it a million times. I'm still not good at it. <laughs> Now, it's a village. It doesn't have villagers. Okay. And it's not like a preset village, so villagers aren't going to, to just naturally spawn here out of nowhere. But once we get some villagers here, they're going to start breeding. We'll get into that in a moment. All right. Uh, this is the... This is the first level. This is the first spawning level. There's only one more thing we need to do to it. And that is, we need to add water. The next step is I want to build up these corners. This will allow the water to flow all the way up to the center. And a particular configuration will do this. Like Avo, I am going to to uh, build this out of cobblestone, remaining true to his build. I think there's some value in having it uh, differentiated from the rest of the stone. So uh, this will be six by six. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And now this one already has one, so that, and then five more. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we want on that corner. Now, just from there, just angle it off, right? Just diagonalize that right here. It's kind of hard to see. And you've got a triangular formation, a six by six right triangle in that corner. Not to take you back to geometry class, but hey, Minecraft's all about geometry. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, total of six. Now, another way to do this, if you prefer, is you can just build out to where it's one away. Build out to where it's one away, one away, one away, just like that. I think that's actually a little faster. At least it works better for me. But yeah, different ways of getting there. One, two, three, four, five, total of six. And you can also double check this to make sure that it's a perfect 45 degree angle there on the corners, right? One, two, three, six total. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. What do you know? Now, eh, I could just uh, make life easy for myself. I think I will. I'm not going to worry about, about grabbing those torches because the water will uh, wash them out for me. And I'll just grab them when we go back down. Four corners, four buckets of water. Hmm. Place it and run away. <laughs> Notice... How that center part of that flow goes right up to that center corner. I don't want to get washed down in the middle. Not until the end of this anyway. So I'm going to run away initially. So I can just get to my next placement. Of course we can resist the flow a little bit. Oh, I think our dirt block for going down was right here. Right? Now, notice that once this is done... The flow is right up to that center, but it doesn't go through the center. Right? And that's perfect. We don't need signs or anything there to stop the water flow. We have what we need. Now, golems are not uh, hostile mobs, right? Unless you hit them. I guess as such, they'd be considered neutral mobs. Uh, unlike other, uh, unlike hostile mobs, um, golems will spawn on water. So, uh, these golems centered on, on this radius, will spawn somewhere inside of this spawn chamber. When they do, 
they have no choice but to be washed down to the center. They don't even resist the water flat. When they do, they will fall down this hole. Simple enough. If you've built grinders before that use gravity, you already know how this works. But there it is. Uh, the next step is to give that baby a ceiling and to work our way up and to start building the next uh, spawn chamber. There are going to be two such spawn chambers and then we're going to work on the killing chamber down here below. The next spawn chamber is really simple because it's essentially just a copy of what we just did. Uh, so, uh, But I'm still going to walk you through that step by step um, just, just in case there are any minor differences. Alright, so I've made a, just a makeshift scaffolding stairway up here. Just make a little platform here just to be safe and have a little moving space. The next thing we want to do is we want to build up one more layer. Mm, I think I'll just keep the corner block here as chiseled block. But from there, I want the next, this layer here to be stone brick. Because this represents the floor. This is <laughs> the floor of the next level. Right, that's what switching the block here for now uh, represents or means, right? Okay, just putting some torches at intervals here just to prevent mob spawning. Since I've lit most of the area, because I have a darkness mob grinder over there, uh, mobs will spawn very fast anytime they get a chance to do so. It's one of the drawbacks of having a really effective mob grinder. And that's alright. It's worth it. But it means I have to keep things well lit. Okay. Here we are. And there we go. So we've gotten that outline in with our chiseled... Uh, stone brick in the corners as usual it's looking good the next thing we want to do is obviously to build out a cross uh, and, to, and to fill all that in minus our, our four by four center hole as always I'm going to rest here so that uh, night can pass so we don't have to worry about torching things which is why I put this bed near our build site good idea of course we're again Plan and survival. There's a whole slew of things that we have to keep up with and think about when we're playing in survival mode that one doesn't have to do in creative. Alright, so uh, let's go ahead and put in our ceiling of uh, the lower level slash floor of the next level. And there it is. There's the beginning of our next floor. Now, just like before, uh, I want to give. I want to build three more up, and I want to make a wall that is three high. Okay. Now we're gonna want torches in here along the edge of this build. Uh, we won't have to worry about mobs spawning in the water because mobs don't spawn in water. But ta-da! Our golems can. Just like before, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're going to build this six by six right triangle in each corner. One, two, three, four, five, and then add that block, and you've got six. And then just go, whoop, go diagonal across. Just like that. across and we have our four triangles as you can see one two there's a gap of four between all of these just like we had below now all we have to do is go and get our water and pop a piece of water in each of those four corners and we're all set 
let's go ahead and get the rest of our water placed each of the four corners just like before I'm going to do this one next and then I can do this one last and there you have it our second spawn chamber is done other than covering it up we don't really need to cover it up but we will just because it looks better Okay. I want to cover this with slabs I want to go up one two more I want to give those golems plenty of room to spawn I believe our spawn chamber below let's see how many blocks high it is just out of curiosity we always have a door to get in <laughs> one two three four five six it's six high before we hit the ceiling okay let's go ahead and repeat that here just to keep it even so we have oh we're halfway there already one two three okay and then this is four one two three four five six all right i had mentioned that i might do a hybrid here a hybrid build with the block types and i think that's a good idea what i'm going to do this is where i'm going to deviate a little perhaps from from obvious build just just an artistic deviation other than that what you see here is pretty much what he has This is the first of those three layers. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is one row as I go around is because my next two rows are going to be another block type. From here, let's switch back up to stone brick. Okay. I'm going to cap it off with the stone brick again so it's framed out. I don't know. It might look great. It might look neutral. I doubt it will look terrible either way. So I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, I don't know which is faster just to do this. Or just to go two at a time slowly. Probably comes out about the same. But I like to really cut loose. So. I'm just going to do it this way. to match up with how many blocks you have in your stack all right uh, there it is so uh, yeah uh, we're six up now so our next step what I want to do next uh, and, and I think a little explanation here is important and one small correction and it's not that I'm correcting him I think I've knows what he's doing and he's very good um, and, and maybe the game is updated since the time he did that build, I don't know. But I can tell you this about Minecraft right now. A lot of people, there's a misperception about the way that, that slabs work. Any sort of half slab, the way they work. People think, if you go online, <laughs> that's the first mistake, I guess. Of course, you're online now, aren't you? Uh, if you go online and you read about how oh, half slabs prevent mobs from spawning, you know, hostile mobs, of course, is what we're talking about, creepers. Uh, it's a great way, actually, to prevent zombie pigmen from spawning in the nether. Um, people take that statement and they, they think, oh, okay, if I put a slab anywhere, mobs won't spawn. And then mobs spawn on their slabs and they're angry and they wonder why mobs spawn. So I want to explain that really quickly. 
because just glancing at his build, I noticed that I avo did a um, several layers of half stone on his build. Some of those occurred at half levels. Some of them did not. Some of them occurred at whole levels, which means that a mob can spawn on, a, on that level. Here's what we want to do. Let's illustrate this. Here's a whole block. It's a dirt block. Okay. Um, if Obviously, if I place here, now we're on a half level. Let me illustrate that with my F3 button. Notice our Y uh, coordinate, right, is currently 84. If I step up to this half slab, I'm obviously going to be on 84.5. Okay, see that? Now, it doesn't show up in the whole number block line, but if you look at the XYZ line, we went from 84.0 to 84.5. See that difference? Okay, and then obviously this is 85.0. Okay. So here's the thing. If you're on a height that's 0.5, you're good. A mob cannot spawn at, at a 0.5 level. At least not a creeper, not a zombie, not a skeleton. Okay. Um, now, you can also place a slab at the full block level. See? See how that's a whole number? Right? So... I'm, I'm at level 85 now, 85.0. There's no 0.5 there, right? A mob can spawn on that. <laughs> okay. A lot of people at first don't realize that. So just a word of warning. When you're using slabs, which we're going to do here, to keep mobs from spawning, that slab needs to be on the half level, not on the full level. Okay. With that point in mind, let's do what we can do here. Um, I'm going to modify uh, the build a little in, in another way as well. I'm going to start with half slabs because I think that looks cool. <laughs> For no other reason. That's a good reason to do anything in Minecraft because it looks cool. It really is. There's nothing wrong with things looking cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to go all the way around and do these. And, and again, I was looking at Avo's build in the distance. Uh, and it looked like there were some slabs on, on the whole level. I could be wrong. Maybe he didn't do that. But ju just to be 100% safe, I wanted to share that word of warning. Now, I don't need to light this up. I can't light this up, not up here anyway, and that's all right. Nothing's, there could be pitch black up here. Nothing's going to spawn on it. So this is actually a good way to stop mobs, hostile mobs from spawning in an area where you want it to be low light or you want it to be dark, as opposed to covering everything in torchlight. All right, um, the next thing I want to do, there's there are other um, types of block, and that that uh that mobs won't spawn on now although it is at the whole level because there are no glass slabs currently i hope those come out soon uh, we are going to use glass blocks for the rest of that ceiling i should have some of those here yeah maybe that'll be enough for us to do this we shall see Oh, look. Let's go ahead and rest. Okay. Daylight's good if we can have daylight. Okay. Let's go ahead and make our ceiling. Okay. This is going to be a mob free build except for our iron golems <laughs> we want those <sighs> how should we do this i could come in one more layer with half slabs and then go glass yeah let's do that i kind of like that idea 
but I like having some light here and I like being able to see into it. That'll be cool for later in the tutorial because maybe then we can come up here and we can actually watch some of them spawn. That glass would allow us to do that. So at the very least, for purposes of this tutorial, this will be good. All right. Little nuance, little difference from the original. See, that makes me... I like that. when, If I put a build out there and someone I notice like, built uses it, but they deviate from it and they improve it, then I can take that back to my original build and I can improve and say, hey, you know, someone else in the community did did things a little better. Or they added some functionality that I didn't think about. That's really cool when that happens. I don't, maybe some people would be offended by that. I don't know, but I certainly wouldn't be. Everything can always be improved. And anytime you watch a new person play Minecraft, even if that person's a complete noob, if you watch them, you can learn things from them. You can learn new techniques, new ways of looking at the game. Kids, for example, there's a lot of value in watching kids. And believe me, there are tons of kids playing Minecraft. And kids can, even though kids can have really sloppy, weird builds sometimes, they can also do some really cool, creative things that adults might not think about. So I, I often watch kids. I've mentioned in a previous tutorial that I do uh, I do a summer camp showing kids how to play Minecraft and playing Minecraft with kids, and it's a ton of fun. And uh, it's a great way to make a little money in the summer, but I do it mostly for the fun of it. And uh, I learn a lot just watching those kids do things. All right. That's cool. Now I wonder if we might maybe do another half slab level here toward, towards the middle. That might look kind of cool. Mix it up a little. Let's try that. Although, again, I kind of like the idea of being able to, to see in. And we can see in. But, well, let's, let's just... Another thing about Minecraft that I think is important, again, I know I'm talking theory as we just do the building in here, but if you think about it, try it. You know, if you have a crazy idea, don't ignore it. Always give it a shot. Always follow through with your with your zany build ideas. Not that this is anything zany, but you never know what you might come up with. It's all about experimenting and trying. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's keep it the same. Go one more in, and then we'll glass out the very center. I think that'll look good. Now again, notice, half block level, whole block, half block. So it's important to remember that, uh, that we are now at 85.5, which is a half block level, which will keep things from spawning on the slab. Okay. And finally, last but certainly not least, glass out the center. Yeah. I have to take a look at it and see from, from a bit of a distance how this looks at some point. Might look terrible. Who knows? We don't have to touch this with torches at all. Which is great. I think that looks pretty cool. Of course, I'm biased. Um, can't see much of it from here. but <laughs> Oh, that's cool. The sun just happened to be like centered on our window there when we looked up at it. <laughs> yeah, that works. Okay. There it is. Make sure it's all in place. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Um, well, that's that's the build uh, thus far. That we, we have our two spawn chambers completed. 
we had we gave it a ceiling uh, we're pretty much done up here we will be coming we will be traveling back upward at some point to do some other uh, modifications but for now uh, our work is going to shift down to the bottom level our next step of course will involve working on our kill chamber area now I'm gonna make a door that goes in here I'm thinking that door is probably best placed right about here something like that maybe even here we'll open it up for now so our next step and it's good that we have some glass on us I want to build a wall a rectangular wall that essentially wraps around this four block drop area so of course it's going to be four wide okay. it's gonna go just like that All right, notice it wraps around we have that marked out with torches let's go ahead and complete the fourth torch we we're using dirt there earlier to go up we don't need that anymore okay now might as well bust these out this needs to be on an even level so we're gonna do that next okay I like to do the corners of this in slat and uh, chisel um, stone brick and uh, going off of Avo's build and I agree completely with what Avo did here looks really good to frame this out with something like chiseled stone brick here I, I just I like chiseled stone brick so he found a good audience with me for that for sure <laughs> there we go something like that right now I'll go across with stone we want this to be three high right here I'll go across with stone you can design this any way you want but the important thing is is that I'm encircling that drop area and you probably you might even have an idea of where this is going uh, these guys will drop down here right and once they drop down here they will uh, get transported to the kill area we're about to start working on that but one thing at a time of course Let's go ahead and stylize this a little bit. Yeah, I like that. Let's see. There we go. Give it some style. Some pizzazz. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh, we'll modify some of the stylistic elements later, too. So we know where our four block drop zone is, we can see it pretty clearly. But if, if we wanted to, we could even do something like this. Now we know right where it is. Okay, I'm just going to put one torch there. Night time is coming. I'm going to go rest in the bed here in just a moment. And we'll keep building. I'm just going to fill in that ceiling there with normal stone brick. If we even have enough to do so, I think we do. Yeah, just like that. We're going to need three blocks high for these guys to, to be able to move and walk. They're three blocks tall, and they're, they're basically two blocks wide for our purposes. Uh, so you, this can't be one block wide. They wouldn't make it. Else. Um, what some people will do, and I think Avo did his this way, that's cool, is uh, I think he uh, 
had like some stone or stone block or something like that here for some of this and then glass some of them. It looks pretty cool. But for purposes of this tutorial, I think I'm just going to go all out glass in this whole thing. Just going to go all the way down with glass. Okay. Just like that. I'm going to leave myself. I should use uh, Silk Touch for that if I have it. Recollect it. There we go. I should give myself a little doorway here to get in and out because we're going to need to do that. And I'll glass out the back. And we'll glass out the front. Oh, are we out of glass? We are out of glass. All we need is four more blocks. And we're out of glass. Welcome to Minecraft. That's no problem. Um, we'll go and grab some more glass from base. I like to keep my core base simple. Nice and simple, nice and accessible. Although this space could be a little bigger cut into it. All right. Let's go ahead and place these babies. <laughs> and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, there we go. Now we can see what we're what we're doing, right? We can see we can see these guys getting killed. I kinda like the idea of actually framing out this entire thing here. Let's see. Yeah. In fact. I think I like that. We'll see. I'll deal with the artistic elements later, of course. But that looks pretty good. Now, we obviously left that there. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a temporary dirt step to get up there. Okay. Very good. Our next step involves lava buckets. Actually, I already have some lava. Um, if you have a mine down at or around level 11, that's the best place to go to get lava. Or, of course, if you have a nether portal set up, you can easily get lava from the nether, obviously. Tons of ways to get lava. We need lava. Oh, I forgot to grab one more thing, and we need signs. So for this build, you're going to need four signs. What? Look at that. We have four signs. Not coincidentally. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build the lava blade or the lava killing device, whatever. I like the idea of calling it a blade. Now, um, even though lava normally burns up wood, lava will not destroy or burn uh, a sign once that sign's placed. So I'm going to put a sign here, and here, and here, and here. Basically, what I'm wanting to do is hold the lava. Hold. I want to hold the lava in place um, right up there on the third highest level, one, two, three, the highest level of this grinder area, this kill area, uh, right up against that front window. And I want to place two lava boxes. I suppose one could do it. It could flow over and probably do fine, but I want it to look good. So I want to place one here and one there. And that, my friends, is the lava blade. So our friend the golem is going to uh, get washed down here. We're about to add the mechanism that, uh, that, that really uh, sets it off. And uh, once he does that, he will get pushed towards that lava blade he will die at the lava blade. How does he get pushed towards it? Water, of course. Now, of course, this also means that we don't have to light the inside of this at all. Other mobs are not going to spawn in the water, and that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to take back these water buckets in a moment. Um, 
for purposes of the of, of doing the build well but for now I'm just going to show you how this is going to look one two place them even and as you can see uh, this pushes forward and it will push him into that lava blade uh, this will work um, and he won't be able to come back and he'll die there and any items will be pushed forward into our hopper system and we're going to put our hoppers right there now sometimes when I build this um, I actually build it so that the water uh, starts maybe a little bit closer to the edge or I pull this edge here back a little bit so that the water flows over the uh, the two hoppers but this will work fine too uh, I won't have to retract this either uh, this this water to uh, to add in our hoppers. Let's go ahead and do that next. Actually, you know what? I think I might stick with my original build. Either one of these options will work. I think what I'm going to do can also regather lava, which is kind of cool. Now, I don't suggest doing that in real life. <laughs> if ever you happen to chance upon some lava, which I doubt you will do. Of course, in your, if you're in Hawaii right now, I wonder if they're still getting pounded by, um, by that volcano. I kept up with that in the news for a little while. Uh, let's pull this back a step. I really want that water to push right under. I want to modify this a little bit. I want to push right under that lava and directly on top of the hoppers. So instead of the glass being there, along with the, the chiseled stone brick, I want to pull that glass back here. And it creates a cool kind of indented look in the middle. And I like that. Now we have what we want. Now before we place that water, let's go ahead and put our hoppers in. Our hoppers are going to go right across here. So as, as I'm guessing most of my viewers would know, hoppers take items and carry them to chest. Right? So it takes an item that's an entity that's floating around and spinning, like when you break a block or something, and it actually transforms it into a stored item in a chest, which in itself is pretty cool. So when these ingots drop, this will put them into storage for us. I was very happy when they made hoppers in the game. Let's see. Hoppers, kind of like logs and other and other items in the game, are are uh, very much based on uh, where you place them, the the position you place them in. I often use dirt for this purpose to give me something to build against. So what I want to do is I want to, I need a surface there that's ahead of us against which to place this hopper. When I do that, the hopper is going into that dirt block. Now break away some block to illustrate that so you can see, so you can, to demonstrate and see what we're talking about. If you look very carefully, you can see a little uh, tube going out of the bottom of the hopper and going in to that block. Now eventually that block will be replaced with another hopper. 
But for now, I just want to have this one ready to go. That's all I'm doing. Now I want to place against that hopper. I'll place this hopper against the other one. Now if you just right click a hopper, obviously you're looking at the GUI for it. You're looking into it. So what you have to do to place against some, a container or anything with a GUI sort of interaction is you want to crouch okay, or sneak and then place. Now that hopper goes into that hopper. And now we go there. Now we basically have a small, what you might call a hopper pipe. All right, um, now the final step is to place our water blocks. This is what will carry the golem into, wait, we're missing one thing. We've got to replace our uh, lava blade for actually killing the golems. There we go. Do that first, otherwise you're fighting against the water. And you're trying to do this step. So there we go. And finally, last but not least. And there it is. So anything that goes in there, like that bucket, will end up. Or wherever we end up taking this to. We'll end up taking it to a chest. Uh, and uh, actually, we're going to take it to what's called an item elevator. And that'll take it to a series of chests that have a self-sorting system. Uh, and we'll get into that uh, in, in a later part, obviously. But there we go. This is built. This is ready to go. Also, uh, it's important that the lava blade is up high uh, instead of it being lower. Otherwise, it could destroy the iron that drops from the dead iron golem. So that's why you want that high, so that when the golem drops the item, it drops straight down into the hopper. Okay. I assumed you knew that already if you're watching this and wondering how to build it, but hey, you never know. So there's, there's our system. Uh, and this baby will work like a champ. It really will. It'll, it'll do its job. And uh, now you may notice that we don't have golems spawning yet. And the reason we don't have golems spawning yet is because we don't have villagers. There are two requirements that need to be met for something to really be a functional village. The first is, of course, the doors or the houses of the village, quote, end quote. And the second thing, of course, is the villagers. And uh, we're going to start placing the villagers uh, in cells. That, that basically surround this build a little uh, a bit higher. And those holding cells for the villagers is what will complete this as a village. And that's when we'll start getting those spawns. But before those babies start spawning, before we put that into place, we want to go ahead and build our storage and item transportation system in advance so it can handle the load. So that'll be the next part of this build. All right, so our next step is to make our collection system. I'm going to stick, uh, at least at least for the, for the first part, I'm going to stick with Avo's build here. And we're going to use what's called an uh, an item elevator or a redstone elevator to uh, to set this up, and I'll show you how to do it in this step. So, the uh, to do this, we're going to need uh, five hoppers in addition to the hoppers we already have. I have 24 because I'm going to use more hoppers later, and that'll be fine. But all we need is actually five. Um, we're going to need three droppers. We need one uh, redstone comparator. I have some extras there that I just brought along. Uh, we're going to actually need three redstone repeaters. And uh, four just you know regular old redstone. Let's just bring some extra just because. Uh, three blocks of any kind. Hmm, I want to use a special looking block. So... Uh, let's use the chiseled stone mix. And um, from there, two redstone torches. And that'll do it. Okay, here we go. The first thing we want to do is we want to kind of make a big L shape here. these hoppers. Now 
remembering how hoppers work. Hmm. How do I want to shape this exactly? One, two, three, four, five. I think that's the shape we want to do here. Yeah, that should work nicely. against it so let's see this one is actually going to go this way so I'm going to go one and I'm going to go one notice now it's going into that I'm crouching to place these so I don't so I don't like right click and interact with the with the actual item and then I'm going to have this one go into that as you recall we had built this one on the inside going out to whatever we would build here. And so now we've completed this little uh, pipe. Now, I want this one to LN one more right here. I'm just following his build. Notice that this is going this way now. So that's what we want. All right. The next step is to make these items go up via uh, an item elevator. And here's how this is going to look. The first thing you want to do is you want to place two droppers facing upward. The way you do that is you just look down at the ground, jump up, and place one. Now this is tricky because you can right click to get in there. So you can jump and hit and then hit your shift key and place it in time. You can pull that off, right? But if that's kind of tough for you to do, you could always just have you know, placed a couple of blocks, jumped up from there, and then placed it right there. That can be done too. Yeah, however you want to do it's fine. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to have uh, our next one facing out towards us where we are standing right now. The easiest way to do that, let's put a block there, put a block there, and then bam. What that means is, is that this hopper will actually feed in to that dropper. Okay, it's going to be dropping upward. I know that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but uh, that one will feed up. And then this one feeds out this way. It spits items out at least at first. Uh, now, this baby's not going to work right now because these are these um, these droppers are going to need to get power. What we're going to do is build in sort of a little, I guess you could, for lack of a better term, you might call it like a feedback loop, where uh, when this thing detects an item in the system, these babies turn on and send it upward and then send it out. Build this. This is where our blocks come into play. And let me think about this for just a moment. What we need to do is have a block here, a block here, and we are going to want to have a block. Oh, <laughs> I'm out of blocks. We're going to want to have a block right here as well. Okay, so our blocks are placed. The next thing to do is to place our comparators and our repeaters, and of course our regular old redstone. Then we'll get to the actual uh, redstone torches, which are which is the, at least part of the source of power for this thing. So what we want to do first is we want to have a comparator Let's see, facing out this way, like that, where, where the arrow of the triangle is pointed that way. Okay. Then, we want to come straight off of that with a repeater. Don't mess with it. It should just be at the first point one setting, where the two uh, nodes are the closest to one another, whatever you want to call those. Okay. And then from there we go. Two redstones straight into this block. Um, 
And then from there we have another repeater, just like the other one, facing this way. Uh, and then here it goes into uh, this next block with the redstone. Uh, and this is where things get a little bit strange. We're going to have another repeater. We'll go ahead and complete the circuit going that way. Um, and it's set just the normal way repeaters are with, uh, with nothing changed. And uh, now for our final two components, the two redstone uh, torches. One goes right here, and the other one faces off right into the top dropper, just like that. You heard that click? Okay, so this thing has sort of an on-off setting. When it receives an item, it will send it up, and it should spit it out right here. Let's see if that happens. Let's throw a little bit of dirt into there. Yeah, and there it goes. <laughs> it lobs it pretty far, doesn't it? That's a dropper. Droppers are different from dispensers in the sense that instead of shooting an item out, it actually drops an item entity. Right? Whereas, uh, I guess a, a dispenser would also send an item entity, but it would shoot it a lot farther, a lot faster. This is more for distributing items to people. Whereas a dispenser's more like for shooting something, right? Let's see. Okay. So there we go. Uh, that's the first part. Now I want you to see that before we add the next part, which will be another hopper. We want a hopper system that uh, that, that that essentially goes uh, goes out here to the side. So what I'm going to do, I don't want the hopper obviously facing back towards the dropper. I want it facing away from the dropper. I want it to take stuff that way. So I'm going to put my hopper. Now when this spits, instead of spitting it out, it quote-unquote knows to get it right into that hopper. So even though you don't see a direct little tube going there, uh, it's sending to that hopper. Let's test it out with just, a f just four or five pieces of dirt. You'll still hear it click or you should know. It actually silences the click when you do that. That's interesting. I actually remember that now. And there they are. See how that works? So now we have an effective item elevator. And that, my friends, is the next part of our build. Uh, now what we want to do after we get the item elevator in uh, for transporting these ingots and other various things, uh, the problem is, of course, that this thing doesn't just put out ingots. Uh, iron golems, if you've ever killed one or seen one killed, you know that they occasionally drop poppy flowers, right? And that's because, um, if you, I don't know if you ever watched an, an iron golem interact with children in a village, but iron golems will occasionally offer a flower uh, to a child, um, which is apparently uh, a Miyazaki anime reference, by the way, or so I've read. Uh, from one of the anime films where a golem gives one of the children in the film a flower. Uh, a lot of weird references in Minecraft. Anyway, um, so these guys carry poppies, which is kind of cool. It's a source of poppies. I wish they had something a little more rare. Uh, but they, they choose to carry poppies. So uh, when they die, they give off iron ingots and poppies. Well, I want to separate those two. I want all of my iron ingots going to one chest. So the next step will deviate a little bit from uh, from Avo's build. And what we're going to do is we're going to build in an item sorter. Uh, I believe Avo did mention that you could sort the items uh, in, in his tutorial, but he, he didn't actually go with that build, which is fine. So I'm just going to follow one of my preferences, and uh, that's what we'll do next. All right, so uh, as you can see, this looks a little different than, than what it looked like before. I've modified this by adding this item elevator by adding two uh, more levels to it. And that's because I want to get a little bit more height here on this uh, sorting apparatus that we're going to add. Um, this, this does represent a small deviation from uh, Avo's original build. And uh, because we're going to add in a self-sorter that uh, takes up a little bit more vertical space and uh, requires that we start uh, about five blocks up in the air to work to have the room to build that and have the chest here at this level that we need. Uh, 
you can just pr probably look at it and see the difference. Uh, but as you can see, just looking at it, the uh, all I did was to add another block up there and to make sure to have redstone torches. Uh, we kept this one here to the side. We also added one on top, and then we added on that other block up top. We added another torch going sideways into the uh, dropper that, that shoots uh, or spits items sideways, right? Just like it looked before, except the other one was here instead of up there. So take a good look at that and note the difference here, if that makes it easier. The rest of the mechanisms are the same. Oh, I think I accidentally took a screenshot of it. Actually, that's not a bad thing that I did that. I can use that screenshot later. Anyway, uh, the next thing we want to do is to build a, uh, a, a quote-unquote pipe. Out of uh, out of these hoppers, and this this is going to carry. Why didn't you guys cooperate? I must have grabbed onto the top surface accidentally on those as the angle shifted. So I want to make sure that it's going in. I always visually double check these, and whenever I make a, a hopper pipe like this. I always uh, test it too, just to make sure before we do the rest of the build that everything's going where it should. Let's do that really fast here. I'm just going to take, oh, there we go, four pieces of dirt, drop them in, and just make sure they get here to their end destination. One, two, three, four. As you can see, this baby's working just fine. Okay. You want to start up high. I think about five blocks high should do it um, on this first sort of initial hopper pipe. Uh, because everything sorts downward from there. Let's see. We only have 12 hoppers left. We might end up running out. But all, all that's really necessary here, and we can go make some if we need to, but all that's really necessary is that I show you the way the rest of it's put together. Um, all of these are the same, so once we look at one, all we have to do is just replicate what we did here. Let's see. So the first thing we want to do, and again, I'm just building this on the fly as we go. This is not a very well-planned tutorial, but I've built these before. I'm pretty good at it. Just bear with me. Um, first thing we want to do is get enough space out. I'm going to have a little moving space through here. I like to be able to, to get to my things and, and work on them if I need to or just see them run. So I like to give myself at least a little single block uh, walk space. For that reason, I've, I've gone a bit overboard and come way out here with these hoppers. I might even go, I might even go one or two more. There we go. Okay. That's good. Now, next thing we want to do... Uh, is actually come down from that hopper. Uh, to do that, I'm going to need to place oh, a pile of dirt below it or any sort of block that I can target with my mouse. And then I'm going to place against the top surface of that block. And that creates a hopper going down. Actually, I made a mistake. I don't want to... I guess we could do a model like this, perhaps. What I really want... It will go down as far as the receiving part goes. But I actually want this hopper to go inward like this. There we go. See how that's facing in right at a perpendicular angle to this flow. You could go either way with this, but for this particular build, I want to stay in the building, so we're going this way. Hmm. We might have to expand the building this way a little bit for this uh, collection system, and that's okay. I don't mind doing that. Let's see. Okay. I wonder. I'm just doing some allowed thinking here. You'll get a lot of that with me. I wonder what would happen. No, it would take up even more space going the opposite direction, so this will work fine. Okay, the next thing we want to do is uh, right here, right where this block is, I want to come out with two stone blocks or the block of my choice. Oh, so i got plenty of stone bricks, and uh, I'm just going to stick with that style. Okay, 
just destroy some of the scaffolding here so I can get a clear image of what I'm doing. See how I have three blocks going that way? And then let's go ahead and build the whole framework. The next block will get right here. So it's almost like a weird looking C shape, right? Minus one block here. Uh, and then from there, we come out one like that. And smash the middle. So the middle's open. Right? And there we go. That's the shape that we're going to utilize in this build. Hmm. I wonder, actually. I'm thinking. Just get, get an idea. I want to be as efficient with space as possible. Let's, let's go right here. Let's go a little bit closer with this build. I'm just going to replicate what we have there. Um, and then I could actually use, use this just to build over. But there we go. Obviously this is going to change, no problem at all. Let's see, right there. There we go, that's perfect. Now, what's going to happen here is pretty interesting, and I'm not an expert on comparators and exactly how they work for every little thing. But I do know that, as their name implies, a comparator compares two signals. And uh, they can do different things from there depending on how you set them up on whether the signal, it, you want it to activate from the weaker signal of the two or the stronger. What we're essentially going to do is use comparators in this build. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. If you don't know how comparators work, it doesn't matter. You just, you place them like this and it will work. <laughs> so it's fine. Um, comparators also sort of treat items as signals. So I want a comparator going this way. See where the two nodes are there and then one there like a triangle. I want the triangle facing inward, away from that hopper that's feeding into it. Okay, and I know that's strange, but the hopper will feed an item this way. The comparator will pick it up but then the item will continue downward here. Now this one goes the opposite direction, as we're going to see. So I need a block to place that against, and it goes right there. All right, let's go ahead and reset the day. Go to bed for a moment. I'm back to it. We're playing in survival and we're sticking with our rule. We're doing everything the good old fashioned honest way. Alright, let's destroy some of the scaffolding. There's more to this build than what you see so far. The other thing we need is a redstone repeater and we want that redstone repeater facing uh, like this. We want the setting to be just the first setting right here, 0 0.1, not 0 0.2, 0 0.3, or 0 0.4. But we want it right there in its fastest setting. That'll work just fine for what we're doing. And the next part of the build is pretty straightforward, literally. We just take some blocks and just build a row across like this, straight across. Right, let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of scaffolding to jump up on. Let's get some regular old-fashioned redstone. The redstone will feed down. This connects the different uh, sorters so that the whole system works in tandem. Okay, there we go. Now, each of these is going to feed into a set of chests. At this point, we can decide which way we want these chests to go. Hmm, how much space do I have here? I might be able to do something kind of cool with this, actually. 
in a way we get kind of lucky. I like the idea that this is actually in the wall here. We can make this accessible from the outside of the building or through just a hallway that you come through here just to grab your stuff. I like that idea. Anyway, ramble over. Um, I can go this way with this double chest backwards, which would be fine and wouldn't inhibit movement. Or I can go this way. Let's save space. And let's go uh, back this way. Pretty easy. Just pop that baby into place. You could do this with a single chest too, but you know, why would we do that? Let's do a double chest. Let's destroy this wall here so we can get easy access. Uh, there we go. And just because I like to have a little bit of extra storage, I like to take this and have one more uh, piece going down. We can put it on either side for the chest. Let's just go this way. And let me see if I can get this right. If I can crouch in midair. Yeah, there we go. That's skill, people. That is skill right there. A midair crouch place. <laughs> nah, not really, but okay. I can dream, right? There it is. Uh, now, uh, this is the mechanism. It's actually also important that, uh, that right here in, uh, I believe it's the topmost. Obviously, that's the topmost, but I believe it's the middle. The, out of these two, it's the topmost hopper. Uh, that we need to place our core item in that we're sorting for. I want this first one to take iron ingots. So let's go get some iron ingots. Poppies are going to be the other item we're sorting for here. This is a simple sorter because we're only sorting for two things. Actually, um, I guess while we're at it, I can show you a more complex build, actually. Uh, same same thing. I'm not going to need anything close to 37 iron ingots to make this work, but why not? I have others in other chests anyway. The other thing I need is poppies. Let's see if I have a good many of those just from grabbing them when they naturally pop up. Oh, yeah. We have plenty of those. Okay. I'm not, I don't really care about collecting poppies from this thing. I care about the iron, but it's just a, it's a side effect of killing a golem. They also put out poppies. Iron golems at least. Hello, zombie. He's been there a while. Okay. I decided not to kill him. I like keeping him. He's my pet zombie. Um... This is the same build, uh, and this and this one's built for my mob for my darkness mob grinder. As you can see, it's working just fine. <laughs> I'm collecting all kinds of good stuff here: bone, arrows. You know, if I had built this at spawn, like we're doing this iron grinder build, it would be even more effective than it is. I suppose I could move it there later if I decided to, but I'm happy with this build. It's working fine. And as you can see, actually you can see it functioning, um, it's uh, working even now. Uh, let's take a look here. Notice, let's add these up. Every slot's filled, that's important. But the total number among these gunpowders here that are just placeholders that tells the system what we're selecting for is 4, 5, so that's 9, 6 is 15, my phone's talking to me, uh, and then that's 18, and then 22, 22 is our magic number. So, what we want to do next, 22, and then there should be a, 20, a, a 23rd that just drops down by one. Right, and there's that very topmost layer there, or row, we'll say. And if we go to this one, what do we have here? We have bone, right? Bone is collecting on these. Okay, so we know that we're going to have 22 bone right 
here. All right. See how that works? And it's the same one down. So we're telling the system, so to speak, what we're doing. Okay, so back to the to the grinder we are working on. I wonder if I shouldn't get some more hoppers while we're here. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Again, I'm just doing enough to show you how to do this. You, as you saw from looking downstairs, you can, in that in that uh, darkness grinder, you can take the sorting system to whatever degree you need to take it. You could use this to make a self-sorting chest system for all your stuff. All right. Oh, I should also add a note. <laughs> At the very end of the line on that darkness grinder, I have one that doesn't have anything at all here. And so what that, and it's always, it always goes at the very end of the line. And what that tells the system is, anything that didn't get sucked into these sorters, just take in this final chest. And so you can always have a final miscellaneous chest for stuff that just happens to get dropped into the system, or for stuff that just rarely uh, might get in there. Anyway, let's see what we have here. So, I'm going to build structures around this and make it look like it makes sense so there's not floating chests and things like that. But that's not so much our concern right now. Let's see. Hmm. So there's our chest. By the way, a cool little BTW. In the upcoming, I was reading the notes, in the upcoming aquatic update, one thing that's going to get updated, updated that I've been waiting on a long time is they're going to make chests where you can put chests adjacent to one another. Now, uh, if you're an experienced Minecrafter, you probably already know that you can bypass that little problem by putting trap chests next to regular chests. Uh, but for me, I like my builds to be pretty and to make sense, so I'm going and obviously the aquatic update hasn't happened yet, so I'm going to stick with what I've always done here, which is to just place the chest and put a row um, of the stone of my choice, in this case, consistent with the rest of the build between the two. That's a good place to pop a torch or something like that, or to put a sign if that's what you need. Alright, that looks nice. I'm happy with that. Uh, obviously, what we want to do here is we, I want to see the system just continue from there. So I'm going to pop that in for now. Alright. Thinking aloud again. Uh, and now we'll just replicate what we had here. Now notice this comes in on the right side of the chest. So I think I'm going to stick with that system. Whoops, you know what? I made a small mistake. It's mostly just an aesthetic mistake. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, except in terms of looks. You can open it from either side. But I'm going to go ahead and turn these chests around. I was mostly just putting them so I could get the hopper placements anyway. Yeah, on this video, like I said, it's candid, so it's just me doing what I do in front of you, doing this in survival. So you're going to see me make some mistakes. Mm, I think that's good. I think that's part of the game. All mistakes are reversible. At least in terms of builds. If you go and fall into lava and lose your diamond sword of smiting three, then that's on you. But <laughs> you can't really fix that. Well, I guess you can. Let's go gain more levels and re-enchant. All right. Now, this is coming into the right side, so I want to just keep the build consistent going down. So this is easy. All I have to do is place that chest there, or excuse me, that hopper there. And then we're just going to go in the opposite direction doing what we do. Just a little placeholder there. So we can go ahead and put our next... Oop, wrong one, Christopher. 
Oh yeah, I'm Adam Antarx. My real name is Christopher. You will hear me correct myself that way sometimes. Alright. I don't know, maybe my real name is Adam Antarx. <laughs> I love Minecraft enough. Yeah, there we go. And this is all we'll need for this build as far as the, the actual construction goes. But again, I, I like to have a third one that is just always miscellaneous. Now, if this baby starts putting out a ton of iron and I can't really keep up with it, in my experience, these put out a, a great deal of iron, but it's easy to keep up with if you check on it once a week or whatever. Um, but if it does start to put out more, I can always go down with more chest. Um, uh, I have options, right? Or I can even do maybe uh, something like the item elevator that you saw over there and actually continue this build around. doesn't matter how, how you choose to expand it from there. But for now, uh, these two chests will, will hold plenty of items. Plus, don't forget, um, even though it might not be much, this item hopper in between will have to also fill up with five stacks before it goes up to here. Uh, and so there's plenty, plenty of room here. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and do our overflow while we're at it. Let's go ahead and finish this baby out. Our gap between these, as you can see, is a gap of two blocks, right? So we know that this will also be a gap of two blocks. So let's go ahead and follow that template. Easy enough. And, you know, again, if you're building three of these or if you're building ten of these, it works the same. But for us, this will be the end of the line. That sounded kind of ominous. Okay. Let's see. All right. Angle is everything when you're placing these uh, comparators. Oh, let's see. Of course, this is a little bit tricky because I have to not be there to place it there. I have to be near there at the right angle. There we go. And there we go. Simple enough. Checking everything. There's one more thing we're going to need here to add. We'll add it at the end. But we're doing a, a great job here already. Alright. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's add our redstone repeaters. Maybe if you're good, you've already noticed the one part that we haven't done yet. But we will get to it. this feed into in power? Well, we also want to come underneath and put a redstone torch here. This is actually important. These redstone torches are what uh, will, by being on and powering the block above them, they turn, they keep this hopper off. Most things turn on when they're given a redstone signal, but hoppers, which actually function independently of redstone, they actually turn off when you do give them a redstone signal. And we want those kept off until they receive the items that they need. Okay. Let's see. Chest time. a little scaffolding out. And then we can place our other chest. Yes. Excellent. I can get that later. 
hopper going in. And then a hopper going out now. Notice. If you want to, if you want to do it this way, this is fine. If you've placed that comparator already, you can actually place the hopper against that back side of the comparator. And it counts as a block to place against. Hard to notice because it has a small item frame because it's a small item. But it's there. Okay. Uh, everything's in place. So this baby's ready to work except for loading in our items here. Oh, what number did we say? Was it 22, 23, something like that? It actually doesn't matter uh, because a comparator tests for a certain amount of a signal. Uh, it, it, it will automatically, uh, once this uh, hopper gets the, uh, the amount of blocks that it would normally take, it will from there drop us down to the proper number and then what I want to do is take what's in there and split them up and of course the extras one will always drop here and then from there they push down to the chest into here so we got it we want one here and we want the rest here. Again, recount. That's 9, 13, 18, 22. And then our 23rd is there. Just think Michael Jordan 23. Ah, you've got it. Mnemonic devices. Okay. Now. That's iron. Our other one is poppies. Now we know we want 23 total. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go one over just to make sure it works and sends it down like it should. Let's go a couple over. So what we want to do is right here, let's drop in our 25. Oh, we have one, one more thing we need, don't we? We're going to need a few more hoppers across there. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, how to do this? Let's just split these up. and then spread them evenly or as evenly as you can anyway there we go let's do the same for our iron there we go okay beautiful so we should have two poppies now oh <laughs> wrong one down there and our stone brick that fell from earlier when we were building Let's grab that piece of dirt and remember that. Oh yeah. I don't like leaving blocks even if I don't need them. I have tons of dirt, but it's just the principle of the thing. Uh, Alright, let's go ahead and make this look good. Or half decent at least. Let's just build in some stuff. Oh, I might need to make a door for myself for now to get out. Okay. Yeah, let's row that in right there. And just for aesthetic reasons, there we go, we'll deviate from the original a little bit. That happens when you do a build, when you add new stuff, that's cool. Yeah, there we go, nice. And uh, this was our false start that we had, so let's stick with our style here. Let's replace that with one of these uh, brick stairs that we got. There we go. Yeah. If you're following along, that's a, I think that's a pretty good way to set it up. And then we got one more right here. No problem at all. Let's go ahead and pop it in, too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let's go sleep the night away, and let's watch our system work. Actually, you know, just before we watch it work, let's do one more thing. Let's go ahead 
and get the two or three more hoppers we need. Let's finish it out with those. Let's make the whole thing run. Let's see if it works. We want to get this whole thing in order. It won't take long. I'm just going to break down a little bit more iron. Not much. There we go. Enough to get the few more hoppers we need. Hoppers are built with iron ingots and chest. Let's go a little overboard. Let's do five. Not six. <laughs> you put that chest in the middle. Kind of looks like a hopper, right? There we go. That'll be plenty for us. Let's head back up. A little uh, minecart elevator there covered in a previous tutorial. That minecart elevator is my best friend. And it really, I like being able to build, to build a vertical base. And that really lets you do that in a very efficient way. All right. Anyway, let's see here. What do we want to do next? We want to finish this hopper system right here. So I want this to go this way. So I want to place those hoppers against that surface. See if we can get the correct angle on that one. Yes. There it is. Great. And this last one, it would keep going, and maybe one day it will if we decide to add more chests. But for now, we just want this last one to go down. It probably collected right there. Miscellaneous items will first build up here before they start to bump others down. Now what I do is I'll identify what the main miscellaneous items are that tend to drop in a given system. Uh, for example, my darkness spawner. The rare mob that spawns in there sometimes is a witch. Witches drop all kinds of weird stuff, right? Glass bottles, potions of healing, sticks, uh, glowstone dust, all kinds of stuff, right? But it's not very often. Not nearly as often as you'll get bone or, or uh, TNT or something like that. Or gunpowder, rather, right? Uh, from creepers. And so uh, arrows from skeletons. You're going to get tons of those. So those have their own dedicated chest. But the stuff from the witches is treated as miscellaneous. And so what I do for that particular one is I go to this last hopper. And I pop in a total of 22 items, but some of those are bottles. Some of those are uh, one you know, might be a potion or something. Another one is, uh, you know, sticks, right? And that way it collects any of that random stuff that I don't feel like dedicating an entire hopper chest sorter to. Okay. In this case, though, we don't really need this at all. This is just overflow, really. All right, all we really need is iron and poppies. All right, let's watch this baby run. So let's say our golem comes along, dies in our system. It, you know, the, the lava blade kills him. And so the items fall into the hopper system going across. Here are some poppies. Here's some iron. Oh, I missed with the poppies. <laughs> Did those get in? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently my character would be very bad at basketball. He does not have hoop dreams. He has hoop nightmares. Look at that. Iron as we predicted, is collecting in the iron chest. Poppies are collecting in the poppy chest. We will not get poppies in the iron chest. We will not get iron in the poppies chest. It is all self-sorted as it goes. All you have to do now, at this point, once we once we get on the, you know, the golem spawning, is just sit back and just let your stuff collect and sort right on its own. All right.
Well, that's the system. Take another good look at it right here, if you want to see what these look like. Here, let's bump up one step. That's a pretty good view of it. I think that's a slightly better view right there. I'll just pause there for a moment so you can see what that looks like. Okay. Got it. I went ahead and took a screenshot because why not? Okay. Well, that's that. That's the next step. All right. Well, uh, we're getting there. Um, our final step uh, will be pretty simple, really. Uh, and will just involve uh, getting... Uh, it's simple in concept, but maybe it's not so simple in actually doing it. But I'll walk you through it and show you a great working method that will work every time uh, for, for getting our villagers into place. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to skip forward. I'm going to go ahead and build one of these villager cells for you. So you can just see what one looks like already completed. And then we will build one together after that. So uh, stay tuned. All right. So the next part of our build is what will make this finally act as a functioning iron grinder. We've come a long way. We've uh, built the spawning area. We've built the doors of the village, the, the, the houses, if you will. Uh, and we've built the, the entire uh, killing zone and collection area. We've built in sorters so, so that our uh, loot from this grinder, the poppies, which isn't really much of loot, is it? And the uh, iron ingots are sorted all by themselves as this thing works. We've done a ton. We've taken the time to build this spawn. We've done all this stuff. But the one critical step remains the piece de resistance, if you will. We need to add villagers. But before we can add villagers, that's actually our next step, we have to build a place to keep them in. We have to build the villager cells. And uh, this acts as the other part of the quote-unquote house. It's more of something that just holds them in place so that they stay positioned for the, uh, for the uh, golems to spawn. So uh, we're looking at one such uh, cell right now, and we're going to build one together. I wanted to start by just showing you one, showing you what it looks like. There's going to be a good bit more apparatus built around this, and we'll get to those uh, in, in their own steps. But, but at base, at, at the very least, what you need is something that looks like this, and then you need to put villagers in it. And uh, I'm actually going to walk you through a good way to put villagers in it as well. I want this tutorial to be thorough. Um, although you can look up other tutorials on how to move villagers around. I'm going to show you how I do it. Anyway, first, let's build a cell. We want to prepare everything. We want to have this beautiful machine ready to go. Uh, as you can see, by the way, in the meantime, I also sort of built in a wall and decorated it a little bit. I don't normally do windows here. But I like this view so much that, uh, that I decided to go ahead and include some windows. Anyway, no big deal. You can build the body of it however you want. But I deviated from Ivo's build just a little bit. Just because of the setting here. Let's see. Hmm. Let's just start by dirting our way up. Yes, I turned dirt into a verb. What we want to do is we want to build a platform that is uh, four wide, going this way, and then three out. Three, you might say uh, three deep. So, uh, and it needs to be centered. We know that we have 16 doors. It's actually a good way to find our center. Uh, so one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. There's one of our centers there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and peg those center blocks, get those in place, and there's our other center. And there should be five doors. One, well, there will be once we build this out uh, to its width. One, two, three, four, five. Good. We are correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this four wide, as stated, and 30 out. Now, you can make this bigger if you want, but I have a reason for not making it bigger. Uh, this is also uh, how it, precisely how uh, Avo builds his, but, I, and, but his style of building, uh, the smaller style cell, works great for my build um, with the villager transportation system, which we're going to add. Uh, we, I want them clustered together into a relatively small space, and we'll see why that is later when we get to the part where we start doing the villager breathing system out of this iron grinder as well. The next thing to do, and I'm just going to stick with uh, we're going to end up modifying this some, but I'm just going to stick with Avo's style here. I like it. What he does is he comes off of here with uh, inverted stairs. I like the way that looks. So I'm going to stick with that. And this is where the walls are going to come into play. The walls of the platform. So we've built the actual platform that the villagers will walk on. Now, we just want to build a framework for the walls to go on. We'll get to that in a moment. I'm just going to corner out these inverted stairs. Looks like I have just enough to finish this part. Very good, very pleasing. It's good to see it come together. Now, look at our vertical here. Okay, let's go recollect some of our scaffolding block, our dirt. Let's proceed to the next step. I'm just going to dirt my way up in a different spot. Now what we want to do is we want to build our corner the corner parts of our walls, right, right here and right here. Avo uses uh, chiseled stone brick, and I agree with that. I think it looks magnificent, so I'm sticking with his build for that. Again, this whole thing is identical to the way he builds his, as far as I can tell. Why reinvent the wheel? I'm going to add some things to this wheel, but I'm not reinventing it. I really like this iron grinder build, and I thought this tutorial on it was just great. Well, okay, here's one tiny difference for for a very specific reason. Uh, he actually builds in um, uh, glass panes here, and I think those look better, to be honest. Uh, but I'm also going for function. We're going to develop a system here that drops villagers down through a trap door that we're going to, to make out of pistons. So, if we had stone, if we had, um, actually, I don't have any on me to illustrate. If we had panes here, there would be a ledge here that the villager could stand on without falling in the hole. That would be bad for our purposes. So I'm using full block thick glass because that gives them nowhere to go. Of course, if you're not worried about that and you only want an iron grinder, well, the glass pane's fine and it's actually more fit. It looks better and it's a more efficient building method. Get a little more bang for your buck there. Now the next step is, the next couple steps are actually really important, so don't skip them. We want to make sure to light this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna light it in a few places. Right there, that I find that that prevents any mobs from spawning. While I'm up here, while I'm at it, I also like to go ahead. because just because I like to light things well 
for reasons we'll look at in a moment. We don't have to worry about things spawning here atop this uh, cell. But I still like it well lit. Next thing I want to do is put a layer of stone slab here. Remember, if we build on the half block with stone slab, mobs can't spawn. So this is well lit and it's slabbed. So we don't have to worry at all about mobs spawning up here. It's good news for us, good news for our villagers. The last thing we want is a creeper or a zombie or something taking out our villagers. That would be bad, obviously. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and pass the night. I think it's best to work during the day, so I usually keep a bed nearby when I build it, when I'm doing a major building project. It's just a good rule of thumb. Now, it's a best practice, you might say. Uh, what Avo does with his build, he actually comes across the bottom and, and lays in some some uh, stone, stone brick slab just to make it look better, and I think that looks magnificent, so I'm sticking with it. Yeah, that looks really good. It just frames it there with those, uh, with that layer of stairs, and just really, really just sets it off. Now, I'm gonna come back and modify this. I don't really love the way this looks right now on this wall, but right now I'm not too concerned about that. Um, but with this addition, this just doesn't look right. Well, we'll find a way to make it look good later. But there it is. That's that's all we had to do. Now, what we have to do. Other than this, I mean, this is fast, right? Uh, if I were just building this and not taking the time to explain it, it would have gone even faster. Uh, so it, I'd say it takes five to ten minutes at most to do each of these. Uh, these are going to be a little trickier because I'm going to have to get some scaffolding up there since it's over the water. But that's no problem. Um, we want to build these all the way around, right? So uh, that's what I'm going to do, and uh, we'll just fast forward to that. All right, so here are our uh, holding cells, as promised. Uh, this is what will house our villagers, uh, and that's what will set the golems to spawning. As you can see, there's one centered on each side. And once those villagers are in there, that's what will complete this as a quote-unquote village. You might also notice some scaffolding added. I've added a lot of it in advance. I'm going to add some of it as we go along on the next tutorial uh, as we move villagers up. There's one more thing that we need to do, and I know I keep holding off on moving villagers up, but trust me, if you're going for the... Uh, for the villager breeding system here as well, which is what we're doing in this tutorial. You don't want to have to build this while your villagers are up here in the cells. You want to go ahead and build this, at least the start of this in advance. So I'm going to walk you through that. Let me switch out my inventory a little bit. This won't take too terribly long. It is pretty simple. I'm only going to walk you through the building of one of these. I'm certainly not going to make you watch me build all four. Let's see. Yeah, that should do. <sighs> what are we going to need for this? Hmm. We're going to need one, two. We're going to need eight sticky pistons total, although we're only going to be working on one of these, so that'll be two. Um, and we're also going to need uh, a good bit of, a little bit of stone brick. I would say maybe two stacks is safe. We have that for sure. And we're going to need a whole bunch of glass. Glass isn't absolutely necessary. You could actually build this out of whatever you want. But I prefer glass because it lets me see what I'm doing. So let's go grab some glass. Let's just see the, the villagers dropping and being transported to their destinations. I don't know. I just think it looks cool, too, to be honest.
I've got a ton of glass. We're going to need, uh, I don't know, for the whole thing, maybe about, about four stacks. Maybe a little more. Maybe six stacks. We'll look at what we start with and we'll, we can actually roughly calculate what we'll need based on this uh, first quarter of the construction that we're going to do together. Oh, you know what? I forgot to get sticky pistons. Let's get some of those too. I've already got the levers ready to go. We're going to need levers as well. I suppose there are other ways to power it, but I think for this one, for this particular task, levers are best. Villagers can be stubborn. We need to give them time to drop into these trap doors we're going to build. Let's see, I might already have. Oh, I do. We're going to need eight. But I'm going to go ahead and bring some extra in case one drops when I'm in the middle of a build. And I'll go get it later, but I just want to finish what I'm doing. It's always good to have a little extra, I think, instead of the exact number that you need. Unless you're on a big inventory crunch. Which we will never be, because we have an ender chest. Oh, we put it in here <laughs> earlier. And in that ender chest, we have a base in the box. So we don't have to worry at all about running out of space. Hmm. Which one is best to start with? I think this one gives us a good view. So let's start with this one. The first thing I want to do is I want to start building a walkway just for our convenience around these platforms. Pretty simple stuff. I'm not worried about building the whole thing right now. I'm just trying to get you through this tutorial. This might be a good height for it. Again, I'm building this candidly as we go along. I've built these before, but it's been a while. I think this will work fine. Now, what I want to do is right here in these center two blocks, I want to build a piston system. I had mentioned earlier that when we make a drop system here, we're going to be getting rid of some of this uh, decorative styling here with these with these inverted stairs. Now is that time that that is happening. I'm going to go ahead for now and get rid of this glass. This is why we, we don't need it right now. I'm going to build it back in. But right now there are no villagers we're keeping in. So I'm going to take that out just so we can get entry here. I want the two blocks that get removed by the piston system to be right here. We could go all out. We could do four blocks across. But I don't want too much. Because I don't want to drop too many villagers. I only want to drop maybe one or two at a time. We, we want to keep a good number of villagers up here in the cell. Okay. Let's see. Let's use this. A little internal monologue. Sorry about that. I want that piston to go here. And here. Is that right? Actually, uh, the, you could do this with just a piston. Uh, you don't you don't need a block for it to attach to. But I prefer to use a sticky piston and have a block that extends here. So 
there's what we're going for right there. See how that looks? Now, what will happen is normally these pistons will be powered up. And this uh, that you see here will be extended out. Now if we want to hide those pistons or, or the blocks underneath, we can do a layer here stone brick just just to make it look better that's fine doesn't really matter to me but I want to go ahead and bust out that half block there as well so I want to see what where we're building from so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a lever that powers and unpowers these babies right here. See how we've started a, uh, a platform system here? You know what we could do? We could even go up one more with this if we wanted, but I think this is fine. Let's go ahead and continue that platform system around. for future reference because we're going to want that to go across here as well. It's going to connect to all these cells. I'm just crudely going to light it right now. Okay. This can also give me a way down later. Let's build out this way too just a little bit just to get us started. I like to be able to access these from this side too. For now this is fine. Okay, how much space do we have here to work with? Looks like we have one or two blocks. That's fine. That'll work. Might not look great at first, but we don't care about that. We care about function first and foremost. Okay, and for now I'm just going to build some crude dirt stairs going down. Just so we can come and go as we please. At least initially. This is all going to get torn out later. In favor of some better stuff. But for now, this is fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab a few things we need here out of the chest. I brought these levers just for this task. We're only going to use one of the four. Let's go ahead and grab a little redstone as well. Well, I suppose there are a couple schools of thought on this, actually. I can share both. You can go with what you want. Let's see. Maybe never remember. We'll just try it. Maybe if we stick that uh, lever there. Yeah, it powers both. Cool. So forget the two schools of thought. We don't even need redstone going across there. We have two levers. Now, if you're a neat freak or whatever, you might want to hide uh, those, uh, those pistons there. Um, in a way, I kind of like them because it lets me see that it's extended, although I suppose I could see it from the side or whatever. So it doesn't bother me. So I'm going to keep it there like that. But if you wanted to hide those under a block or a half block or whatever, I suppose you could and that would be fine. But I'm happy with this just the way it is. Normally, this baby is going to be in this position. Whenever I want to drop villagers down into the, I guess, the, the villager transport system. Initially it'll just be a glass tube that they drop down into a water flow so they don't die and so that they get pushed where we're going to want them to go. Whenever we want to drop them down into that system, we'll retract those pistons and then we have a hole for them to fall into. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's go ahead and build in, build back in some of this glass here. Go ahead and I want to keep these open for now. So I want to keep this in the off position. 
again much easier to build this before you get your villagers in even though it's not necessary to the uh, to the actual iron grinder part of the build it will be necessary to our next part so we'll go ahead and prepare for that our next part will be the uh, the villager transport and breeding system so as you can see right here is the hole that they fall down right pretty simple stuff first thing I want to do is uh, probably going to just square this off here on the bottom. Or, we can do this, get rid of some of the stylistic elements. This is where we start modifying Avo's build just a little more. Ah, that's alright. I'm still glad I showed you, walked you through sort of his approach. I don't know if you want to make it make a little more sense, I guess. I'm just thinking about it as we go. I think what I'm going to go for here, instead of just starting with glass, I'm going to start the column. Stone brick, kind of hide that a little bit right there. Yeah. I like that. Then from there, that can transition us a little bit, right? Our glass tube, at minimum, needs to be this big. I've I've always liked just squaring it off though, because that's just how I am. Okay, that's all we need right now. Um. But I want to go ahead and show you what this is going to look like. So, I just wanted to get this started. We're going to come back and build all of these later. It's a two by one drop. As far as the actual vacancy in the middle goes, right? And there we go. Now later, what we're going to do is we're going to go into that and we're going to continue that central hole downward through the dirt. We're going to make a tunnel system that uses water to push these villagers to a holding area that's outside of our village. Okay. But for now, that's all we want. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just start building those in, and we'll fast forward to our next part, which is moving the villagers up. See you soon. Okay, well, uh, we fast forwarded through time. At least you have. I have not. <laughs> and uh, we've built these uh, holding cells. We've completed them. And we've com we've uh, started the uh, drop system. Uh, now this is important before we start adding the villagers that we just double check all of these and make sure the pistons are extended for those trap doors. Good. Just running around and checking them all. Now this one is not. Glad we checked because later when we transport villagers here, we want to make sure that they don't fall through the hole. Not that they tend to want to fall a long way, but we don't want to risk it. Okay. Now for the part you've been waiting on all this time. Transporting the villagers and getting this baby started. That's what will activate and uh, turn on this entire uh, system here and start spawning golems. However, that won't happen until we have 10 villagers. So we're going to have to get them into place. Uh, either get 10 up there or uh, or breed them up there once we get uh, a minimum of, of, of really of two in place. And we're just going to do two for starters. You can do the same method for the others. Although I have 8 to 12 villagers already that I can transport. I have some up here and I have some others down here. As you can see up here, hey guys, I have one, two, three, four villagers. Well, that's not really enough. I want to get two in each cell um, 
for, you know, just go ahead and have those started that way. So I'm going to need eight villagers. The rest of what I need, as you can see, they're down there. I've gone ahead and built in some redstone uh, tracks here to do this, or rather some, some rail tracks with some redstone uh, power. Uh, I think I've tried a lot of different methods for moving villagers. I think this is the best, particularly for what we're doing here, moving villagers up to a higher elevation into a very specific place. There are other ways to move villagers, such as using water or even using doors. Uh, where villagers are attracted to doors, so if it's the only wooden door in the area, you place a wooden door and the villagers will follow you. Maybe, overall, not unlike the way that a, a, a sheep might follow you if you're uh, if you have wheat in your hand, although, although the door method involves actually placing doors. But I'd rather uh, do it this way. I think it works better. I've used this method. It's tried and true. Uh, so... Let's uh, get the villagers, hmm, let's go for a little bit more of a long shot, let's get them up here. Now as you can see I've built a, a, a dirt stairway up. What I want to do, is I want to go ahead and put some powered rails on that all the way up, or just about all the way up. All the way up to that holding cell. I'm going to open up a little place here in the half block in the slab top. Well, that's fine, I suppose, but I'd rather just put a regular one there. And they'll drop off right into here in the minecart. All right. Now all I have to do is power these rails, otherwise they, they act as the opposite of powered rails. They act as brakes. I can power those from underneath. Oh, look at that. It got them all. Cool. Minus the first one. <laughs> Let's see, actually. Hmm. Now it's just a matter of putting rail wherever we need. We're going to destroy all this. This is just temporary, so it can be dirty and ugly. It doesn't matter at all. As long as it works, that's all that matters. I just want to power it enough to make sure that it does work, that it gets them where they're going. Yeah, this will do a fine job. I'm even going to overpower it a little. Okay. Well, yeah, I'd say for this, you probably want a powered rail about once every 15 blocks, but I overdid it. Except, of course, on inclines, you have to power uh, a good number of those. I just power them all, because again, None of this is permanent. I'm going to be reclaiming all of these rails, including the powered rails. This is just a temporary setup to get these guys into place. Or girls. Or whatever villagers are. Okay. Now you might notice I have two villagers here. I want to keep these guys here. These are farmers. And I find that it's kind of hard to get farmers to, to exist. Uh, so these took a good bit of work. I used to have a wheat, an automated wheat farm here. I'm going to move that wheat farm and integrate it into this build later down below. We'll get to that step later. Um, but for now, I'm just keeping these guys right where they are. They're not going to be part of the villager breeding system. All right. So, hey guys, let's get you moved. Hmm, should I start with these? Or should we start with the ones that are far? Well, before we make that choice, actually, let's go ahead and get a couple of minecarts. I'd say three, and that's good to have on, on our person. It's good to have a good bit of dirt on us, although we're going to reuse some of the dirt that we used for those ramps and such. One thing I want you to notice that these two holding areas have in common and we're going to uh, take advantage of this later down below when we make the villager transport system and holding area. Notice that uh, there's a fence here on the second height. Right? There's a hole there. That's because this prevents these guys from walking out but if they're in a minecart they'll go right through that and won't take any damage. And the same is true down here. 
Notice we have an inclined fence, in this case a stone fence or a stone wall. Right? I put a door there so I can come and go as I please. But these guys will get transported right through there. Let's do these guys first. So what I'm going to do... Hey guys. I'm going to just pop in a, a little line of rail here. That doesn't take much. This cleric here is in a perfect position. Maybe we can get him going. Once we get him started, oh yeah, there he goes. He's going to keep rolling. He's going to go all the way up to where we sent him. So this build is a little bit, um, what's the term? It's work. The work is much heavier. Uh, the work is very front loaded, you might say. You do all this work to get the uh, to get your rail in place, and then it's nothing just to move the villager seamlessly into place. Now I'm gonna keep him there. Uh, later I'm gonna hop in there and get that uh, get that minecart back. But for now he's not moving. He's chilling right there. I like that. He, she, they look more like he's to me, but you know, whatever. Whatever the case may be, however they want to identify is fine with me, I don't care. I am going to dehumanize these villagers in many more ways besides gender discrimination, <laughs> so I might as well not give them that, right? Oh. They're locked in a cell up high, where their sole purpose is to breed. Uh, well, I guess their dual purpose is to breed and to uh, help me spawn iron golems. That's it. That's what they exist for. I'm a very bad man. We're all bad when we play Minecraft. Chopping down all the trees, destroying all the natural resources. Crushing the pristine virgin landscape that we're given for our own means. No wonder it's so popular in America. Anyway, here we are. Hello, buddies. You guys are stacked there on top of one another. That does not look very comfortable for the guy underneath. So let's go ahead and smash one of these. Swords work fine. Uh, I don't want to kill these guys, but if you just hit once, it might damage them a little, but most of the damage goes to the minecart. Now, there's something interesting here that I'm going to show you later. Um, notice that we don't really have a good way of getting out of this hole that we're in, right? See, he took no damage. First one looked like he took a little. For now, what I'm going to do to get out of here is I'm just going to double pop really quickly and destroy really quickly those two uh, dirt blocks just to get out. Uh, in an upcoming part of this tutorial I'm going to show you how to build in a, uh, a minecart uh, elevator system to get out of there. Not really a full a full-on minecart elevator but a but just a single minecart. I call it a get out minecart because <laughs> it gets you out of a hole. Why don't we go ahead while we're here and just make one of these uh, minecart exits for ourselves. I'll show you how that works. It's a perfect time to do it. And we have some extra minecarts, so life is good. There we go. <laughs> they are looking at each other like, why are you on top of me in a minecart? I thought having a bunk bed was bad. Yeah. Alright, anyway. I think rails travel north to south if memory serves. What that means is this rail is not facing the direction we want it to go uh, for purposes of this 
minecart exit system. I like to put mine out front for whatever reason, maybe because I just have more squares to work with. All you got to do to make it uh, go the direction you want it to go uh, is simply to, uh, to place another rail in that direction. And then once you smash the additional rail, as you can see, this rail is still going east to west, uh, just like we want it to be. Okay, simple enough. Now, let's go ahead and place some blocks around that and pop in our minecart. Very simple stuff. Let's check it out and make sure it works the way we want it to work. Let's free these guys from their minecarts so they can continue their new lives of servitude. Oh, okay. He took a little damage, but he'll be alright. He's alive and that's all that matters. I'm showing him who's boss early on. Alright, so I can right click that and I am out of there. Life is good. Now, I actually want to leave some of this open. Because I want a way to get down there to these to these villagers, and we'll go over how that works soon enough. In fact, you know what? We built a whole ceiling here. I don't really, I don't really care about having a ceiling. Some people have pointed out that old lightning can strike your villagers. Well, you know, if lightning strikes one of these guys and kills them, fine. I can just breed some more. It doesn't matter. Um, what's what's more likely than you know? lightning striking, which is a metaphor for things that happen rarely anyway. Um, what's more likely is I'm going to need to get up here and give these guys uh, bread, carrots, or potatoes or beet, beetroot to, uh, to breed them. And I like to have an open space to do that, and this gives me that. In fact, we don't even need that. That's just not needed. Okay. But we'll keep this layer of slab. And here we go. Now, we can get down here. Oh, it hurts a little. We can interact with these villagers. We can fix that. And we can get out by right-clicking that um, minecart. Life is good. Here. Right here. Let's just bust that out. That half slab up is just enough to hurt us. But now, we take no damage. So what we want to do is enter from here. I'm going to come in and put a ladder uh, maybe right here as well so that we can uh, move up and down. Do I have a ladder on me? I don't. I have some in the chest nearby. And that you get, so you'll get once this uh, dirt uh, pathway here is gone, the way you'll get in is through a ladder. The way you'll get out is through the minecart. Although I suppose could actually just get in through the minecart. That works too. That's even better. So we don't even need a ladder actually. Life is good. Um, actually, if we drop down from here, we don't take damage. That's good too. So we can replace that. You're seeing some of my thought process as I go. This is how things get improved. This is how th things get better. This is how you get better at, as, as at, I can speak today. This is how you get better at a build as you continue to do it. Yeah. They're already thinking about making the beast with two backs. Which is essentially just hearts rising up in the air and then a villager appearing. Actual human sexual activity is a good bit more involved. Oh, hopefully no kids are watching. I didn't say any of that. Waiting on night to, to occur so I can go to bed. I'm a deep sleeper, so this pretty much does simulate real sleep for me. I put my head on the bed. I'm out pretty quickly. Next thing I know, it's morning. Except for me, it's like 2 p.m. That's my morning. Okay. All right. So we've done half the work. Uh, the next thing to do, obviously, once we get uh, two villagers into each of the other uh, two cells, right? Four villagers total. We will have eight villagers all the way around, two in each of the four cells. Two times four is eight. That's not quite enough to uh, start spawning uh, 
the uh, golems, we need a minimum of 10 villagers per one golem to spawn. So uh, we're going to need to do a little bit of villager breeding as well, or we can just move a third villager up to the two other um, holding areas. Well, I have these villagers down here. I don't want them down here. I want to move all of my villagers. So I'm going to take the path of just moving these villagers up. Now, I want to make one more note before I close this tutorial, and it's important. You may not have a source of villagers nearby that is convenient. And actually, the truth is, I didn't originally have a source of villagers nearby. I didn't have an actual village nearby when I built this base near spawn. Um, my method for uh, handling this uh, is, to, uh, is to rehabilitate for lack of a better term, or cure, a zombie villager. A zombie villager is a zombie who has features kind of like a real villager. They actually have, you can see a nose on them like a real villager, right? Uh, they, have they have colored clothing on. So uh, if this guy were a zombie villager, this cleric, he would have a little bit of a purplish looking cloak or, or clothing uh, on him. It would be sort of in rags because he's a zombie. And that's what zombies wear, apparently, is rags. Uh, and uh, what we would want to do is uh, use a splash potion of weakness on him and then give him a golden apple. Uh, I, have a t I have a tutorial on that. And if I figure out a way to do so, uh, I will have the link posted right here about now on this video if you need to see how to do that. Although plenty of other people have posted great tutorials on how to do that, whether in written form or in video form. It's pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, once you do that and you have two zombie villagers rehabilitated, then you can start breeding those villagers and making a village of your own and that's essentially what I did in there. Uh, that was my holding area but I'm going to change the holding area now to these four cells because I want all of my villagers up there and nowhere else. Just for simplicity's sake. Alright, uh, well we'll fast forward to the part where we uh, have all these villagers in place. I'll walk you through how to get villagers to breed. That'll be pretty easy, but why not include it? It'll only take a moment. And then we'll fast forward to the actual uh, point where we have what we've been looking for all along, which is a working iron golem farm. I will see you then. Look at that. We caught a golem. <laughs> so what were we at now? We were at 39. Let's see what he gives. Usually he gives about 5. Let's see what he gave us. See our item elevator is functioning. Our sorter is working. We'll get back to our discussion of uh, crops here in a moment. Look at that. We went from 39 to 48. That's a lot. I wonder if it might have killed another one while we weren't looking. Oh, well. As you can see, it works. <laughs> it works great. Now, uh, while this isn't the highest production, uh, iron farm available to us. Had to adjust my mic. Sorry if I've been echoey because of that. Um, this isn't the highest production iron farm. There are some incredible iron farms. For one, uh, the Iron Phoenix is just is phenomenal. It puts out thousands and thousands of, uh, of iron ingots. I, I'm not really interested in doing that. Uh, I just want a lower production uh, iron farm. One that's not too hard or involved to make. And that's this one. Uh, over time, it will collect plenty. The advantage that this one has over some of the other builds is you don't have to activate it or do anything to it to make it work. All you have to do is just let it run. And it will run. I went ahead and made a bit of a small base in here, too. By the end of it, I'll have a bunch of chests and things like that in here, too as well, so it can also function as a base and storage area. Okay. But, uh, and remember, because it's at spawn, this baby goes 
all the time. If you're in the server, this is running. I could be thousands of blocks away and it's running. And that's because, remember, way back at the beginning, we took that step of locating spawn. And that is going to pay off huge. Okay. Anyway. Um, back to our discussion of crops. So, most crops will cause these guys to breed. Now, keep in mind, it's not like when you click a chicken with seed or when you click a pig with a carrot. It's not the same way. You're not clicking them with these. You're actually giving them these. So you're dropping them down just like you would with another player character for, for them to, for the villagers to pick up these items. And um, now, most things take 12. Um, so it takes 12 uh, beetroot, it takes 12 potatoes, it takes 12 carrots to make them willing to breed. And again, the advantage of that is those aren't used for much else, especially potatoes and beetroots. Carrots are obviously used for uh, breeding pigs. Not that I breed a lot of pigs, another point for another day. However, the best the most efficient way to go is bread because all you need is three bread and one two three as you can see three wheat equals one bread so three bread is nine wheat that's nine wheat instead of 12 carrots or instead of 12 beetroots so you actually get off on a better deal here if you use bread right and so that's what we're going to do we're just going to make a whole bunch of bread and just have it in the store for making this work it's going to work great okay now let's go and check on our villagers i built a little access ladder up here eventually i might even make a small minecart elevator to get up here even faster but we'll see for now, a ladder works fine. It's not like it's a huge ascent. All right. As you can see, we have our mine carts here to access the top. I'll put a slab there later. But for now, it's fine. What I want to do... See, these have three in them. I don't want these guys to breed too much. I want to catch the ones up with two first. So let's just drop down. Let's go to the cells where there are only two people, because I want to breed these up evenly. Oh, and of course, this is the one where I didn't put the uh, <laughs> the minecart yet. Well, we'll come back to them. I have to install my minecart there. Here we go. This one has two, and it has a minecart. See how much better that makes life for us? Now, what I'm going to do... One, two, three. I'm going to separate these into groups of three. I'm going to throw this one more this way in hopes that our cleric there will pick that one up. Yeah, he got it. Good. Now let's separate these villagers just a little bit. Let's throw one here for this other villager. Looks like some sort of smith. What kind of smith are you? I'm just curious. You're an armor smith or an armorer. Okay, cool. Well... You guys have uh, some good cleric armor babies. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't work that way, but that would be kind of cool if it did, if you could uh, actually interbreed them to make certain classes. But hey, just like with humans, genetics do matter for certain things, but for things like your choices in life and such, culture and life also play a role. <laughs> All right, here we go. A little fall damage, no big deal. In fact, my friends, that is the absolute minimum fall damage you can take. <laughs> One more half slap down and I would have taken none. Let's go ahead and get these guys going too. I just want two of these to breed for now. I don't want all three of them to be willing at the moment. That would be inefficient anyway, because that's an odd number. Only two of them are going to breed anyway. I must have slipped up on the half slab when I dropped there. Let's go up here. We 
it should be a half slab lower. There we go. Didn't take any damage that time. That's how that should work. I just slipped off the ledge a little, that's all. Let's give you one. Because you know clerics love to breed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to refrain from making any religion jokes. I'm just not going to do it. That might not be cool with some of my viewership, so I'll keep that to myself. Yeah, there we go. We dropped down. But it was tempting. And then we got these two here. Let's go ahead and... Uh, eh, it might not be a bad review moment anyway. But, and that way we can give these other guys a little time, see if they breed, see what happens. Oh, let's see. Um, let's... I'm going to have to go back and get more wheat, which is fine. That's no problem at all. I also want to go ahead and make a few minor adjustments here to the build. That's a good thing to just go around and do. I've also made it a little bit prettier. prettier. I am not done doing that, but it's on its way. All right, so like right here, let's just crudely move up here. I want this open, right, like the others, so I can see these guys. Actually, the truth is, I don't even have to get down there with them to give them the, the crops. I can drop them in. That's no problem, but let's put one here. Good, that one I didn't even need the extra step. Just put it right in. Very good. Move here, half block down, drop in, grab our stuff. And now we are good. Now we don't need that dirt anymore. Another thing I wanted to do though, very quickly while we're here, let's go around and just make sure that all these slabs are in place like they should be. I recall seeing one missing somewhere. There it is, right there. Okay. Maybe there's another one. I don't know. Nope, that was it. Alright, well that build is done. There it is. Now, I don't know how long it's going to take these guys to breed. Like humans, they can be stubborn. These guys weren't stubborn at all. There is a baby villager. And judging from the color of the robes, this is either going to be a cartographer or a librarian. Very valuable. I'm sure that later on we'll end up transporting this one down. Especially if he offers up some really good maps or some really good uh, enchanted books. All right, so already we've added to our number. Oh, and there's another one. All right, so what we want to do is we want to get these guys up to about the maximum uh, number of villagers. So we're just going to keep periodically uh, getting, making them willing to breed. And we're just going to keep them doing what they do. My target number here that I'm going for is 20. I want... 20 villagers. I actually want to go a little over that. I think with 64 doors, the cap of these villagers should be about 23, 25 villagers. I think it's 35% uh, of how many doors you have is the magic number. Uh, so we have 64 doors, so we're going to be looking at low mid 20s here. That's, that's perfect because that gives me enough leeway that I can uh, move two or three of those villagers down for trading to the villager holding area, but always keep a constant number of 20 up here for uh, purposes of creating golems. And this thing might have already collected more while we were gone. I am not sure. Oh, well, yes, it, it's, 
it is working as you can see you go off and do your own thing out in the world for a while play a day or two of minecraft you'll be amazed how much this will collect i've built two of these on other servers and they work great uh, you'll you'll have more iron than you need uh, anyway, that's that, people. That's the that's the iron grinder uh, part of the build. That's it. And uh, we're going to uh, move on from here, and and uh, start working on the villager transport and villager trading and breeding system, which, as you can see, we've already gotten the first part of that started. Uh, but that'll be the uh, focus of our next part. Until that time, I will uh, start working on it, and I will fast forward you to that moment. All right, so here it is. It's our fully functioning iron grinder. As you can see, we've collected a good bit of stuff. Look at that, over a stack and a half already. Even while we're still building it. Well, now what we're going to build is we're going to build a, a tunnel system for taking villagers away from the village. Um, this uh, village is going to cap out over 20. It's going to be about 23, 25 villagers, something like that. I think it's 35% of the total doors is what you end up with for villagers. Uh, that'll be low mid-20s. Uh, what that means is, is that at any given time, I can transport out, um, you know, two or three villagers and still uh, be producing two iron golems at any given time. So uh, that will allow me to build up, as long as I select those um, with, with some care or some thought, I can build up some really good shops in another location that's outside the boundaries of this village, quote unquote. Okay. Um, the village extends either to where these doors are uh, or 32 blocks out, whichever is uh, greater. Okay. Uh, so, um, hmm. 32 blocks is obviously greater. I think it's 32 blocks from the center of the village, which would be right here between uh, all of these doors. That 4x4 four four, uh, drop zone is actually also our center. But I'm just going to go ahead and play it safe and go about 35 or so blocks from the edge and just make sure. There's nothing wrong with going a little bit farther anyway. And it'll probably take us a little bit of distance to get this right. What I'm building here is a series of underground tunnels. Um, they're going to go out here to a holding area that, that ideally will be aligned perfectly or near perfectly with my, uh, with my base, which if you've been watching these videos, you know is underneath that tower. And that way I can get to my villager trading zone very easily, very uh, very efficiently, very conveniently. So I want this to go back towards my base. These villagers will be transported out uh, of the quote-unquote village, which means then that these villagers are, uh, around it will, try, will start breeding again to try to reach the village population cap. That will produce more villagers. Uh, and when that happens, I can look at those villagers, see what trades they're offering, see what professions they are, uh, and I can I can select them for movement and for transport as well. And before you know it, I'll have a great base of villager trading as well, as an excellent iron grinder. So this is a two-in-one deal. Actually, by the end. We're going to make this a three-in-one deal because we're also going to build in an automated wheat farm here at Spawn, but we'll get to that in its own turn. 
Uh, so, the first thing we need to do is dig these tunnels. There are a variety of ways you can do these. You don't have to be as much of a perfectionist as I'm being on mine. I like for mine to, to have a nice symmetry and come together the same on both sides. Just feel free to do whatever you need to do to direct these villagers to where you need to get them to go. Uh, what I would suggest doing, no matter how you build, is have a central tunnel. This will be my central tunnel. Here, I'll show it to you. Okay. Uh, and from there, um, the other tunnels, as you can see here, will, will, will flow into this tunnel. Right? And there's going to be water flowing down here. For now, I'm not putting it because I don't want to have to deal with flowing water all the time. But, but by the end, this will also be flowing uh, downward. I'm going to slow down this flow once we get here. But for now, this is what it is. Uh, as you can see, um, we want the other tunnels to come in uh, about two blocks above wherever we're at currently on this tunnel. That way the villagers can't climb back up or jump back up and, and, and get, get into that uh, water flow and start walking backwards. Of course, their tendency is to get pushed in the first place, but I don't want them to make any trouble. So we're, let's walk up this, albeit very slowly, because we are resisting the flow of water to see what this looks like. Again, there are multiple ways we can do this. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. This is just a crude tunnel. There's nothing special about it. One point to note, although we've overdone it here, I'm going to fill some of this in, actually. But you do want to give them plenty of clearance space overhead. Because sometimes the villagers will kind of hop in the water. And when they do, if there's a low overhang, they can get hung up on that for a while. That's not what I want. I want them to constantly just be pushed down to where I want them to get. I want this thing to work like a well-oiled machine. Now, if you look up there, you can see that that's a drop zone for the villagers, right? Right there are the two blocks that get pulled back by the piston. The villagers fall down. They hit this water. They take no fall damage from this water, which is a good thing, right? Uh, and then they uh, they move forward. If they do take a little bit of fall damage, the water will stop most of it. I tested this one out myself, and it didn't cause any. This one's a little more shallow. We'll see. But it certainly won't kill them, which is fine. Then the villagers will move on down. They'll be pushed down right here, right here, moving on on down they drop down and now they're caught up in this flow which will take them to uh, the holding area for our shops outside of the boundaries of the village and of course this again will have its own flow uh, because i like my build symmetrical this one will come in from this side in fact the next thing i'm going to do is build this one out identical to that one uh, and if I do that and build these exactly the same, it will end up underneath the other tube to the other side. So, let's go and look at it from the top side. I'm not going to make you watch me build these. I think you know how to dig holes. If you don't, <laughs> you shouldn't even be watching this tutorial. It does require a little a little bit of calculation at times. Um, what I would suggest doing, first dig your central hole. Okay, Get it to about the height that you wanted, at least initially. It's going to have to go down further for the water to keep flowing down. Okay, But um, what you want to do is uh, use your F3 key. And that lets you see your coordinates. And then you can match up your coordinates. Once you locate the spot on that on that central tunnel where you want the other tunnels to come into that one, you go down there and you, you, you pinpoint your X, Y, Z coordinates. And all three of those are important. Uh, X and Y, obviously, for east, west, north, south. Excuse me, X and Z for east, west, north, south. But then Y for your height. Height is also very important. Because like we said, you want this one to come in about two or three blocks, I would say three blocks, higher than the central, uh, so that they can't climb back up as we saw.
Okay. So the next thing to do is to dig this one in. For the one in the back, you don't even really have to have these all the way around. Um, but I prefer it. I prefer the full sym radial symmetry of the thing. Uh, this one's pretty easy because I can make this one just go into either one of these. I'll probably make it enter into this one that's underground. Because if it's a little bit ugly or whatever, it'll be hidden. So this one will actually drop them down and take them this way and downward into this drop here. And that's how that will work. I've got a bed here for quick rest. This is, like I may have mentioned earlier, that I'm going to turn this into a small base anyway. Where we can get basic resources and such away from base. But yeah, uh, there it is. So we're going to get that done. Uh, and then uh, I'm just going to fast forward uh, to the point where that's done. And uh, in addition to that, I'll also go ahead and build the holding area. Just before that, I should quickly note, your holding area will probably be underground. It doesn't necessarily have to be. We could transport these guys from, say, right here. And we could transport them to an above ground area. And if that's your preference, that's fine. The key thing here isn't so much height as it is distance. And you want to be a minimum of 32 blocks away I would say go a little over that go for 35 or 40 and as long as you do that it doesn't matter where you keep the villagers in terms of height but I want my stuff to look cool and I think it would look cool if it were down there in the water sort of a sea lab like glass dome type build um, yet centers off with my base so that's what I'm going for you don't have to go for that at all. So I'm going to try something that's a bit more complex than the minimum that you'd need to do here. Anyway, um, until that time, uh, I'll be building away, and only a moment in time will pass for you. All right, uh, just a quick update here uh, before we move on to uh, creating the automated wheat farm. I'm going to just walk you through, literally, one of these tunnels to show you how villagers get transported. While we're at it, we could transport a villager as well. Uh, let's see, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, transporting them through our tunnel system to the uh, designated holding area for villagers. Let's count our to total villagers. One, two, three, four, five. This can be hard to do sometimes because they kind of stick close together. Uh, six, seven, eight. That's like a little trio there. Nine, ten. And if we count the little guy, we will. He'll be eleven. Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. Wow, look at all these. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22. Ah, uh, yeah. 22 is our cap, by the way. I busted out the calculator. 35% of 64 doors is... Uh, I believe that the exact number is 22.4. Round that down, you've got 22. So this produces 22 villagers. Uh, that's what that's the max villager population cap, which is it looks like that's about what we're at. That means we can afford at any time to get rid of two villagers. This one has a lot of villagers, so I prefer to pull from the one where villagers are most numerous. So, what I'm going to do is pop open this trap door. And we weren't lucky enough for one to be standing on that. That's alright, that's normal. And uh, I'm going to drop down right here, take a little fall damage, I don't care. What are you? You're a butcher. Butchers, believe it or not, are actually kind of good to have for villager trading. So I'm going to drop him on down. We Now, quick note. Uh, when I first built this, I had put a normal, sort of standard wooden trap door there. And trap door, right? That seems to fit perfectly what we need, because this is a trap door, 
<laughs> well, um, a trap door has a ledge on it. It doesn't take up quite that full square space when you open it. Uh, and they can climb on that ledge. So the reason I've opted instead for a more complex, slightly more complex, uh, a piston trapdoor build is because there's absolutely no ledge for them to stand on and it's precisely the same reason here that as explained earlier that we're using full glass blocks instead of glass panes like Avo did in his build. Of course Avo didn't, uh, didn't add this functionality, at least not yet, of having a villager transport system. Anyway here we are we've dropped down the tunnel we're just gonna follow it. Now it Again, as explained earlier, if a villager had come from one of the other uh, tubes or drops, they would eventually end up here as well from those entrances. So all of the villagers from all the platforms end up here getting washed down the center. And I leveled it off because I didn't want to go too deep because eventually, as stated earlier, haven't done it yet, I'm going to do sort of a glass dome sea lab type look here. Uh, but for now, um, we're right under the surface of that deep ocean here, by the way. Um, for now, I'm just going for simple and crude because I just want to walk you through this in the tutorial. And I don't want to distract from the basic elements of how this thing's put together. As you can see, you can do this very simply. Uh, now, there's our villager. Notice that the drop off here is two blocks low. Uh, that is so that he doesn't take fall damage, but at the same time, he can't get back up there. So he is in the area. Any villagers I send down here are just stuck here. Um, now, I've put in a rail system to transport this villager. This rail system is semi-permanent. This part of it is certainly permanent. Um, because we're always going to be drawing villagers from this uh, central uh, collection area. Um, but this, I say semi-permanent, because these, uh, these parts out here are going to always be in flux, depending on where we need to put villagers. As you can see, we already have one uh, villager merchant here set up. It's a fisherman. We're going, I want to have all of the different uh, professions here and traders represented. Uh, obviously, the, the really good ones are the smiths and the, the librarians give you enchanted books. You can get some really good enchanted books from them, especially when you start getting protection enchantments from them, and like silk touch enchantment and efficiency and all the all the mainstay stay sort of enchantments that we often use. Anyway, we'll get to that uh, later. I actually have a tutorial on village trading, but I'll probably make another one specific to this. Anyway, let's look at how to transport this guy. As I've said before. Villagers can be very stubborn, so we're going to try our best to get this little guy into a uh, into a minecart. They tend to resist where you want to push them, but he got right in. Now, in case he goes back here, which he did, that's where this little button comes into play. Come on back. Or, yeah, there you go. Now he's going to go. He goes right through. That's that uh, stone wall or stone fence. Any fence there will work. I like the stone because it's consistent with the rest of the build. Now notice, of course, we've sent them to the wrong place. What we want to do is actually smash away, eventually, uh, this and get him going in there. We made a side. I didn't uh, prepare that. I will this time, though. And everything will be good. He'll come back in a second. If he doesn't come back on his own... I'll send them back. Let's do that again. Now we have them going into the designated area. I want to have a block ready to block him in there. Sometimes they can try to uh, slip back out in the minecart. If they do, it's fine. Because they're still on the track where we want them, as you can see. Hello, little guy. Let's get you on your way. Oh, let's actually click the button. There you go. Pretty convenient system. I suppose what I might do is use a little redstone. Put that button off from where he's at so it's easier to click. That would be a good improvement. But for now, this this simple uh, system works. Sometimes you got to nudge them in a little further before you can place the block. I keep them in the minecarts uh, because that way um, they're just... 
not only are they guaranteed not to move, they're stuck there. Even if I open this up, he is going to stay still, which is good for me. That way I can make modifications. But let's say that later I, I get a better butcher. And that's not going to be hard. I want to get a butcher who actually trades about 12 or 13 raw pork chops for an emerald. Great way to get emeralds, especially once you have your pig farm going. It's the only reason, in fact, that I make a pig farm is for villager trading. I don't use it for anything else. Um, anyway, let's say we get a better butcher. We replace this butcher. Uh, we're going to get several better butchers than this, in fact. Um, what I want to do is have an easy sort of way... To transport him out and maybe put another one in his place or maybe I want to reorganize these guys so all the butchers are together all of the librarians are together right and I want to sort them out down the road right I can do that because they're they're in their mine carts ready to go ready to go where I move them to whereas if they were free walking and I open this up they could just continue to wander around so the loss of five ingots that goes into making a mine cart is totally worth it and I've learned this by hard experience. You can trust me on it. And hey, guess what? Making a minecart out of five ingots is no problem because we have an iron grinder. In fact, in the time that we have started this part of the tutorial talking about villager trading and followed this little guy down, I'd be willing to bet that already uh, an iron golem has fallen down into the kill zone, uh, has died, and has given us five more ingots minimum. So we're good to go. Mine carts, you know, anything made of iron is no object for us anymore. Anyway, why don't we not repeat the same mistake we had last time, or the mistake I made last time. It wasn't your mistake, dear viewer. Why don't we go ahead and have the next one ready to go? I go right up to the spot where I want to drop them off, but I don't go all the way. I find that if I do that, um, it's easier for them to sort of bump back and go back the other way. Anyway, there we go. Um, this one's ready. And uh, eventually, once we get here to where we have two on each side, uh, obviously we'll, we'll do these as we go down the line. I prefer to do the hard work first and to start kind of far away first and handle these and then to work our way in. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's it. Let's take one more look at it before moving on. It's a very simple design, as as you can see. You can make this more complex if you'd like. I'm curious. I don't know if I have all the stuff I need to do this right now, but I'm going to take a shot at it. Mm, you know what? I wonder. I doubt this will this will work. Actually, I think I have a way for it to work. If I put it here, it probably won't power that rail, will it? But maybe if we go down one. Yeah, there we go. And that way we can have the villager in place and ready to go. And then we can pop the button here and it, his sort of frame, his clickable area won't interfere with the, uh, with the frame of that uh, button. Ah, later I want to put a wooden button there so it stands out better. But hey, I know where that button is, so it's fine. Um, the other thing to note, by the way, and you don't have to be so fancy in your build, uh, I actually centered this um, shop area with my main base, the tower that before you saw in the distance in the, in the earlier parts of the video. And I, and I actually, because it's centered, my, uh, my minecart elevator is centered on that, so I knew that I would run into this, right? I checked those coordinates before I centered this tunnel and this uh, room. And uh, so here we are. I have a minecart to, to get out of the elevator on. Makes it a little easier for your main destinations. We're on the elevator. Uh, if we follow it up, here we are at base. Yay! Easy. I like easy, I like convenient. That's good. Um, and just since a little bit of time has passed since the last video, let's go ahead and rest. Take care of the nighttime.
Why don't we check it out and see what we've got in our iron grinder? Oh, yeah, look at that. We're on our way to five stacks. And although it's just a side effect, hey, we've got some poppies. If you're making uh, things that require a lot of uh, red dye, then you're all set. I wish they would drop a variety of flowers, but that would be too easy. Anyway, uh, yeah, everything is working. Everything's running like it should. Uh, now, just to let you know where we're going next, um, and I have briefly mentioned this in several parts of this tutorial earlier, um, the third and final part of this build, at least as we're envisioning it now, uh, is to add a wheat farm that is, that's incorporated into the bottom of this uh, grinder slash tower. I've already sort of dug out the area to get that started. I just pretty much dug out to the edge, cleared this out, made it nice and clean and ready for the build and nothing more. I kept our four block center marked because I like to keep that marked <laughs> for no other reason. It's good to know where the center is. Uh, so here we are. Um, I am going to build the wheat farm at about this level. Could be a little up, could be a little down. But this is about where it's going to get. Uh, I have a previous video tutorial, uh, and I'll post the link here, on how to build an automated wheat farm. It's really a 90... 99% automated wheat farm. There is only one thing that you have to keep up with periodically, and that's giving the villagers seeds occasionally, the farmers who replant your stuff. But other than that, the rest of it is 100% automated. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to apply what we see in that video, but we're going to build it here, so it's going to be a little smaller than that one because we need to fit it within these confines. Um, and we're going to build it uh, right here. Uh, there are two reasons for that. Number one, uh, as we discussed with the iron grinder, uh, things that spawn, and we are centered on spawn right now, things that spawn uh, will always keep working no matter where you're at in the world. And that's good for an automated farm as it's good for uh, an iron grinder. The other reason is that if we build that wheat farm within any proximity of the village, those farmers are not going to want to plant crops. They're going to want to get to the nearest village. So they're going to stand, let's say that this isn't where the village is, and the village is this way somewhere you know, relatively nearby those villagers are going to stand over here and just like like fish or turtles in an aquarium who are unhappy to be there they're just going to stand there on the edge and just try to go that way all the time they're not going to plant they're not going to work they're just going to yearn for home so what we have to do is we have to center this baby at home uh, they will perceive when they're down here that they're right smack dab in the middle of this village uh, and so they will be happy workers so there are two reasons we're doing it one because it's necessary and two uh, because it's optimum and this baby will work great uh, and I've done this build before uh, twice already so I know that it works anyway um, Maybe in an upcoming video uh, version, I can update you on that build. Uh, but if you just put together uh, what what you see in the other tutorial and you just build it here, uh, you'll do fine. You'll have it. So I'm, I don't want to make this a four-hour tutorial, although I think we've already passed the two-hour mark. Uh, because we've built several things. We haven't just done one build here. And I think that's the value of this build, is that we've taken full advantage of the spawn area, right? Uh, not only for an iron grinder, 
but also for villager breeding and eventually for that wheat farm. And that's great because remember, we're using bread to breed the villagers. So why not build in a, a nice a system that produces bread? And if I wanted to be really crazy, and I may, um, I could even put in an item elevator to take some of that wheat straight up here. Uh, to where I'm actually uh, giving these guys uh, bread, but pff, I need something to do. So I don't mind getting a few stacks of wheat and putting it up there in bread form in a chest. That's fine, but, you know. Sometimes it's the fun of building the mechanism for its own sake. Anyway, that's that. Uh, that's the build, and it works great. It's already working great, as you can see. Here are our two farmer villagers, by the way, that we're going to put down there. I've referenced them a little bit before earlier, uh, but I've been saving them just for this occasion. Uh, and they'll be easy to move down there on uh, with, with rail, right? I'll just skirt around our tunnel system here. I'll probably just build a little tiny tunnel of... of uh, of minecart rail ramping them right down to that area where we want them that'll be easy or I could just use our uh, just bust out these stairs here and throw and temporarily throw in the uh, the rail and just send them down that way that might be the easiest way to do it actually uh, anyway there it is um, there's there's our completed project I hope that uh, that this uh, tutorial has been valuable and uh, I hope you've gotten a lot out of it and I hope you use it and uh, I hope you I invite you to modify it uh, if you modify it feel free to, to send me a comment uh, you might include a link maybe to a video of your build I would love to see maybe what you've done with this how you've modified it and uh, you, you might also give a little bit of credit to Avo as well, or Avo Mance, uh, as I'm giving credit to him for his uh, great iron, uh, iron grinder build that I used as the foundation for this larger build. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, uh, this has been Adam Antarx, and I wish you the best, and I wish you happy Minecrafting. <laughs>